point lead. That's a lot, right? Well, it might not be enough to overcome smack in the wall, so I better not do that. What if I get wrecked or blow an engine or come up short of fuel? Hey, I've got a 20-point lead, sure, but man, that's nothing. Well, racing at over 180 miles an hour, the unexpected can happen at any time. Certainly something Brad Keselowski is well aware of as he sets off into today's race looking to try and claim the NASCAR Sprint Cup Championship. He's hoping his day turns out like Tony Stewart's did a year ago when Stewart claimed the cup by going to victory lane at the end of his Ford EcoBoost 400. Tony is our ESPN in-race reporter today. He starts deep in the field for this one, DJ. Third. Hey, Tony, Dale Jarrett. Uh, I know you're, it's kind of old hat for you about winning championships now with three of them, but uh, can you take us back to maybe that first time that you came here trying to win your first championship and had that lead and maybe what Brad Keselowski's going through right now? Well, the biggest thing is the, you, you know what to do that got you here. It's just uh, when you get into today, you're, you hear stuff that you don't normally hear. You feel vibrations that you don't normally feel. Um, and, and no, no matter how good it felt in practice, uh, when you start the race, it's just a different set of emotions. Because you're, uh, when you when you got a lead like that, you're it's it's hard to not sit there and think about what you got to do to protect. So uh, you know, as much as you always want to win the race, I mean, there's a bigger goal. It's uh, it's not winning the battle; it's winning the war. And how to win the war? Sometimes you have to play a little different. Yeah, sounds easy, uh, kind of hard to do. Leads us to our mailbag uh, from Will in Fort Stewart, Georgia. He asked, being a former contender for the Sprint Cup during the last race of the chase, did you find that other competitors drove differently when they were racing around you? I think so, for sure. Um, you know, it's everybody Everybody knows what it takes to get here, and we're, we're 36 weeks into a 38-week schedule with a few special races, and it's a long year and a lot of preparation, and... Uh, you know, everybody, everybody knows how hard it is to get here, so everybody is pretty respectful and mindful of uh, what these two guys have to do today. All right, Smoke, thanks for talking with us. You have a good day. Now Andy's going to talk to your crew chief, Steve Addington. All right, bud, thanks. Hey, Steve, it's Andy in the booth. I know you guys don't have a chance at the championship this year, but tell us just how important it would be and what it, would, what it means to win the last race of the season for a race team. pumped up over the winter to get the get back get to the shop get focused on what you got to do for the next year to prepare to go after a championship uh it's disappointed that we aren't in this thing to battle with that two and the 48 for a championship well you've got a deep starting position here what and this is one of those tracks that's a little difficult you choose up tires how can you leapfrog your way up to the front here well hey everybody on this off the seat mobile and chevrolet worked hard all weekend and uh we struggled trying to find a balance and to get some speed out of the car and worked hard last night on it. So uh, hopefully we've hit on something here that he can drive his way up there and uh, gain some track position for us. If not, we'll, uh, we got a great pit crew here that goes over the wall and we can get him some spots on the road. But the tire fall off, it's hard to go for two. You know, it's like in Atlanta, you know, fresh tires is a, is a lot of speed. So uh, we'll see what we got here and tune on in from there. Okay, I'm sure you got him a good setup to go forward to this race. We appreciate you talking to us, Steve. Good luck. Thank you, Andy. I just want to say thanks to Office Depot for uh, all their support here at Stuart Haas Racing. They were involved in 14 wins and a championship, so uh, and I was just uh, very happy to be part of with three of those wins. So uh, appreciate everything they've done for us. One of many stories wrapping up today, that sponsorship of Stuart Haas Racing. Stewart and the rest of the field running behind the pace car, a 2013 Ford Fusion Titanium with platinum selling Kid Rock driving. Got a new album coming out tomorrow. All the others have been good. Can't wait for that one to come out. Great to have Kid Rock here with us today. Been a lot of fun having him with us all chase long. And a look at our ESPN High Definition onboard cameras. It'll take you inside today's race. Brad Keselowski's got the Dodge on board. Hey, Brad, Paul, the whole number two team. Uh, thanks for all this good work. Uh, got the leader in that two car today and uh, he knows what he's got to do to bring it home the captain roger penske talking to brad denny hamlin is carrying the fresh from florida gulf seafood on board tony stewart also carrying a fresh from florida gulf seafood on board camera clint boyer's got the five-hour energy camera kyle bush with the toyota on board 
There's Jeff Gordon with the Goodyear camera. And Jimmy Johnson's got the Lowe's on board. Thank you for all that you have done all season long. It's been a wonderful season. A lot of wins, a lot of laps led, pulls, everything. It's been a very, very good year for us. Chad Kadaus talking to Jimmy Johnson. We've also got the Chevy on board with Dale Earnhardt Jr. today. To Bib Road before the start and Dr. Jerry Punch. When it comes to one race for a championship, you know, there's a very thin line between focus and stress. Jimmy Johnson's team right now focused on the fact they have walked away from here five times as an NASCAR Sprint Cup champion. Their stress comes from the knowledge that no matter how perfectly they play it today, it may not be enough if Brad Keselowski finishes 15th or better. Here's Dave Burns. Roger Penske's been trying to win the Sprint Cup championship for two decades. Today, his opportunity comes in the form of a brash young kid from Michigan. With his tweeting and his talking, Brad Keselowski has raised eyebrows. With his driving, he's raised the hair on the back of champions, past and present. And with Brad Keselowski's help, today, Roger Penske may be able to raise the Sprint Cup for the very first time. Maybe. Dave, thanks. And you see Brad has moved up to the number one starting spot in that inside row. Practice crashes yesterday for Joey Logano, Denny Hamlin, Greg Biffle, and Regan Smith have sent all four of those cars to the tail end of the field. Nervous few laps for all those drivers? I'll guarantee you for all of them, especially Brad Keselowski. They're starting on pole. They're going to have to deal with sun going down in to, to one. That's going to could be a big factor. You can, really can't see other cars around you. Brad Keselowski said he's going to try his hardest to lead this first lap and get that first bonus point toward the championship. It's 267 laps to make up the 400-mile distance today. The championship trophy awaits at the end of the Ford EcoBoost 400. Marcos Ambrose outside of Keselowski, and the green flag will underway. to second, not a good start for Keselowski. None whatsoever. He couldn't get the car going on the initial start. And this car looks like it's sliding around quite a bit right now. That's Cliff Boyer in the 15, working on him for third place. You just heard Tony Stewart tell us that it seems like that as you start this anticipation, that car doesn't feel anything like what it did in practice yesterday. Yeah, it looked like he tried to run right on the bottom, right behind Carl Edwards on that first lap and got a little bit loose coming off turn four. Looked like he tried the higher lane through there that time. Still side by side for third. A couple of things to think about here. First of all, you see how wide they fed out on this progressively banked Homestead Miami track. 18, 19, 20 degree banking, going from lowest to highest lane. And the other thing is, those track conditions and temperature conditions are going to change greatly over these 400 miles. We'll see most of the running on the bottom and, and middle of the racetrack when they have fresh tires. After that, we're going to see them very quickly move up to the very top, right against the wall. Jimmy Johnson settling in line 11th after starting 10th. They're working on Sam Hornis Jr. in the 22 for a spot. I know they were working hard on this 48 car. He was not very impressive in any practice session that we've seen so far this weekend. But we've seen that before, and they come out with a victory. So Boyer cleared Keselowski for third position. Now Kyle Busch behind the two in the 18. Certainly someone to keep an eye on today. And we'll see if as the laps build a little bit, that two car can get rolling and get a couple of those lost spots back. I'm seeing Brad, he's really searching around on the racetrack. He's been high, been low. Looks like his car is pretty good right now. If he's run a couple of laps, that first couple of laps uh, look pretty, uh, pretty loose to me. One thing that happens with these racetracks, uh, they got sand on them. Uh, when the race starts, it's just it's kind of slick. You really don't know what you have until you've run five, ten laps and get the track kind of cleaned off. Yeah, there's been no activity here today whatsoever, and it's the first time they've really encountered that scenario here this weekend. So I'm sure that uh, Brad was probably filling things out, being a little bit cautious right at the beginning. Big run for the 18. 
Yeah, and this is a car that a lot of people looked at. This 18 is one that they would have to beat. Got into the wall in the, the last practice yesterday a little bit, but they were able to repair the car. So Kyle Busch to fourth, Keslowski to fifth, Martin Truex, Matt Kenseth, Eric Almarola, Mark Martin, and then Jimmy Johnson in the 48. Remember that the real basic of this championship today is Jimmy has to beat Brad and beat him by a significant chunk. If through any reason Keslowski finishes ahead of Johnson, then there's no chance for the 48. Keslowski, the likelihood of your putting yourself in a potential three wide situation like we saw Johnson peeking out there for a second not very high today but Jimmy he's going to try and take everything he can uh, he's just going to have to go where he thinks he can make a pass and do whatever he can to move his way forward not happening right now but yeah the two car we're not going to see that at all probably somewhat intentional to, to make sure that the car was was under the hem and, and to get started a lot of nerves there so got probably a calming effect but they'll need to work on it someday they will dj and keep this in mind for brad one of his strengths this season has been that he tunes the car to what he expects in the race and so i asked paul wolf you see there on the right why they didn't stay with a setup that brad liked on saturday morning he said it was because the Yeah, we saw as this racetrack cooled down yesterday, a lot of cars that were good during the sun got extremely loose when the sun went down. So that could be a good scenario for them. Paul Wolf apparently planning ahead. Yeah, I talked to Paul this morning. He said that he expects this racetrack to get freer as it cools down. And I'm sure that he had anticipated that with the setup. And it's not going to be optimal right at this point with the track being with a lot of sun on it. But Brad will be patient, and, and I think the track will come towards his setup. So while the championship contenders settle in in the opening laps, Brad Kozlowski sliding back from starting on the front row to fifth position. Kyle Busch has just moved up a spot. He's taken third from Clint Boyer. And Jimmy Johnson trying to pick his way up through the top ten as he races for ninth position there with Eric Almarola and Casey Kane joining in in the five. Getting that point of the run, though, that he really probably needs to be on that top lane. Now it's being occupied by his teammate Casey Kane and, and Jeff Gordon coming behind him. Second place here, Carl Edwards, 99, trying to hold it off. Kyle Busch coming after him. It's like Kyle's car is one of the cars that's still good on the bottom. He seems to be able to kind of go where he wants, but it, I tell you, it's nice to see Carl Edwards and Marcus Ambrose up here running at the front today. Uh, haven't been able to say that a whole lot, especially about Carl after losing the championship here last year. And for Ambrose, announced an extension with Richard Petty Motorsports here on Friday. He's leading the race, the Ford EcoBoost 400 in South Florida. Mixing it up up front in the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series, Ford EcoBoost 400. And reminding you to go to NASCAR.com for all your latest NASCAR information. There's the new leader, Kyle Busch. Was closing in on Marcos Ambrose when we went to the break. Here was the pass that eventually found him clearing the nine. Yeah, he had worked for a few laps trying to make that low line work. Couldn't ever get him cleared, but uh, gets a nice run up out of four. And now Ambrose has got company for second spot. Carl Edwards in the 99 and Clint Boyer in the 15 are there searching for some racing room. Yeah, Carl had it there for a minute. I thought he was going to be able to keep that spot. But Ambrose got back by. Now Carl's taking it back. Just about every one of these cars that you see on screen, there's some little news thing revolving around this season or next season that could be associated with that. Eric Almarola, 43, they're racing with Jimmy Johnson. Signed to an extension by Richard Petty Motorsports for next season, announced here Friday. 
And Jeff Gordon joining into the fray there. And this continuing to be a race for 10th, 11th, and 12th, Doc. And Jimmy Johnson says his car is a bit free coming off turns one and two. And now he will get a challenge from Jeff Gordon. Jimmy said before the race, if I try to throw a Hail Mary at these speeds too early, I'll get in trouble. i got to wait till the car comes to me. And right now he's having a bit of an issue right there with the car getting a bit free coming off two and headed down the back straight. I'd have to say they might be ready to make some adjustment then if we keep talking about this track freeing up, which we heard pretty much every driver last night. And most of them that I talked with, they were anticipating that type of scenario this evening, too. But I like what you said to start with. He can't go out there and just throw a Hail Mary and crash the car now because he has to keep that car at least in contention in case something happens to the two. Third place here, Ambrose in the nine, Boyer in the 15. Clint Boyer's had just a great, great season with this Michael Walter Racing team. And they've just done so many good things over there. And uh, Clint Boyer would be the first to tell you, he, he's been a little surprised. But once he got there, got in the middle of it and got with Brian Patty, really felt good about it and uh, really looking forward to the future. And what Brian Patty says the crew chief at Clint Boyer has done for him, besides being a great driver, is brought the fun back to this high level of competition. Little slide job here. And he's got it. So Boyer up to third. So a look at the picture at the front of the field. Kyle Busch there has motored away from Carl Edwards by an even two seconds. 22 laps into the race. There's Edwards in second. The race for third. Boyer, Ambrose there in fourth. And now Kozlowski's put a little bit of a gap in front of him for some cushion intentional or not he's got it and he's got matt kenza who's climbed up to sixth position behind him there's truex there's kane and then jimmy johnson back in ninth position caution free so far just underway here at homestead miami speedway and we remind you to check out nascar.com slash race buddy and watch coverage live today by following your favorite drivers for free with eight live camera views. Kyle Busch out in front early at the Homestead Miami Speedway. Good look at the Homestead Miami Speedway where the championship deciding race for the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series is being run today. The Ford EcoBoost 400, almost 50 miles in, caution free so far. And Kyle Busch is the race leader after Marcos Ambrose led the opening 14 laps. Which driver do you think will take first out of this week's top four qualifiers? Those four drivers listed. Text FAST to 34763 or go to attfastestdriver.com to play. You could win four Gs by playing along in today's AT&T Fastest Driver Challenge. Every week you have a chance to make your pick and see where you stack up against the rest. Brad Kozlowski running in sixth position as we ride with him. That's Matt Kenseth just ahead of him who slipped by. Kenseth at his final ride for Roush Fenway Racing today where he spent his entire Sprint Cup career. He moves to the Joe Gibbs team next season. The update on the two from Dave. Listen to how descriptive he is in this latest radio transmission. The car is so tight and a one ball that uh, I'm not able to really do anything with it. I expect that to get freer the next run. But I expect that free to be more center off than entry. That's why I want to do a double adjustment. As of right now, my drive up off is respectable. Uh, but I'm managing my tires to accomplish that. I expect it to get worse. When Brad was 12 years old, he carried a carbon fiber briefcase to the track while his dad raced. In that case, he told me it was a book called Advanced Racing Geometry, one called Racing Techniques, along with a pack of gum and a bag of Skittles. Brad doesn't have an engineering degree, but he's been to the school of racing, and his engineers love how he tells them what's going on, how they can fix it. I've read a few pages out of that book. That's, uh, that is actually a pretty good book to understand how race car suspension works. I really like the way that Brad is explaining that, though, because that helps so much on making that adjustment. When he talks about why he wants to make two changes, he's really tight getting into one, and he expects that uh, that's probably not going to get better if they make a, uh, just a single adjustment. Casey Kane there closing in on the back of the two to try and challenge for the sixth position. 
And what caught my ear out of that transmission from Brad was how he was managing his tires at this point in the run. Yeah, when your car's tight in particular, and I started to bring this up earlier when we heard that he was tight, was that you had to be careful on a long green flag run that you didn't abuse that right front tire. Get yourself into real trouble there if you're not careful. And you can see that he's giving himself plenty of room with that tight race car. It's not allowing him to run the line that he wants to right now. That's what's got him in the position to win this championship, is being smart from the time the race starts until it's in. Yet I've noticed that he's not contesting those spots from there when he's being pushed, especially getting in the corner, not driving it in the corner really hard, which does help save that right front. See the leader, Kyle Busch, has caught the tail end of the field, beginning to put some cars a lap down. Travis Quapple, Landon Castle, David Reagan, David Stremme, and the 36 car there of Dave Blaney. The next one in front of the leader, Kyle Busch. Won't be all that many laps away from a round of green flag pit stops. As we run caution free so far in the early going. So Kyle Busch with a big lead at the head of the pack. Brad Kozlowski running sixth. Jimmy Johnson running ninth. But lots and lots of racing still to come today at Homestead. Beautiful look down on the Homestead Miami Speedway from our aerial coverage provided today by Goodyear. From pit lane to victory lane, every NASCAR driver counts on Goodyear tires. Goodyear, the official tire of NASCAR. And a reminder that Monday Night Football continues on ESPN tomorrow. First at 6.30, Monday Night Countdown served by Applebee's. Then at 8.30, two division leaders squaring off in what should be a defensive battle. Brian Urlacher leading the Bears against Patrick Willis and the 49ers. Monday Night Football, Chicago, San Francisco, tomorrow at 8.30 on ESPN. Here at Homestead Miami Speedway, the final race of the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series season. Caution free so far, approaching the first round of green flag pit stops, and Jimmy Johnson fighting with Martin Truex Jr. for the eighth spot, Doc. Yeah, yesterday Chad Canal said we didn't have the speed we wanted the 48 car, so we freed it really up for quite a bit in the final practice, and they found the speed. But right now, with the speed, they have lack of grip, which is what they told Jimmy just a moment ago. Good job, bud. The only thing I can suggest is maybe up tight, closer to the wall, where the track might be cooler because the shade may help you a little bit. Just a thought. They feel like if the shadows come over the racetrack and it cools off, the grip will come. And that's where they're set up right now. They will make an adjustment on this first pit stop in a few laps. But right now, very free. And Jimmy looking for grip up near the wall, dangerously close to the wall. All right, Doc. So the update there on Jimmy Johnson, who has now moved up to the number eight position. Kyle Busch opening up a 4.4 second lead in this opening run of the race. Carl Edwards running second and barely can see the back bumper of that lead car. If he can even see it. Clint Boyer, Matt Kenseth, Marcus Ambrose, your top five. Then the championship fleet of Brad Keselowski in sixth, Dave. And Alan, he has told his crew, consider short pitting. I have been hard on this right front tire. You guys talked about it. When that car is tight, when it won't turn, it's that right front that takes the heat. That's interesting. Yeah, I'm, uh, you, I'm be watching lap times on Paul Wolf. I'll just be looking at the lap times. If I see a, a sudden drop off, I'll have him pit a little bit early, but uh, that's good information coming from Brad. Are a lot of cars beginning to dive onto pit road. Martin Truex Jr., Sam Hornish. Dale Earnhardt Jr., Mark Martin, Greg Biffle, all hitting the pit lane here as we've reached 44 laps into this race. And I think with the wave around this damn time, it's not as big a gamble there because you can get back on the lead lap if you happen to pit early, get caught with a caution. So probably not a bad idea. And now Johnson with his fray in the windshield finally. Clint Boyer, Marcos Ambrose, Casey Kane on the pit lane. Jamie. And Casey Kane just saying he was tight on entry, really hitting the splitter. Kenny Francis, his crew chief, told me that has been their concern all weekend long. Four tires there. They took a tear off, and they'll fill it up with Sunoco fuel. 
Tony Stewart, Kevin Harvick, Eric Almarola, Jamie McMurray, Denny Hamlin also in. Here comes Jimmy Johnson with Jeff Gordon coming to the pit lane here. Doc? They know the track will change. The question is, will Chad Canals change the race car? Indeed, they have made a decision. He will make a chassis adjustment for Jimmy Johnson. Free off of both corners. They're going to make a chassis adjustment. Left rear, four tires. Trying to get it full of Sunoco fuel. Trying to be very deliberate. No mistakes. They've got to be mistake free. One round adjustment. Johnson's away. Carl Edwards gives up second for a pit stop. Matt Kenseth and Brad Kozlowski following him in. No speeding penalties wanted today, Dave. And first opportunity for the pit crew to shine for Brad Keselowski. Again, the car will not turn the way that Brad would prefer it to. That tight condition they talked about. They'll go to work on it with a, uh, at this point, a wrench is gone in the rear. That's a track bar adjustment. The Philip Bullet Sunoco fuel, they will change four tires, possibly an air pressure adjustment. There's the wedge in the left side as well. That is the, uh, the wrench in. That's the double adjustment that Brad talked about. Kyle Busch, the leader, still has not pitted. Bush, Newman, and Casey Mears are the three remaining in this cycle that have yet to come to the pit lane, and you see Kyle slowing now to make a green flag stop. It's an impressive opening run for that 18. Well, it sure were, and you didn't want to give up too much time out there because tires are worth so much here. Dave? Well, Kyle told his crew chief, you can try to free it up in the center, but I'd rather you didn't. He's worried that if that happens, that they might get the car to not turn off the corner. So it'll be just a slight air pressure adjustment to keep up with the racetrack as they also change on four tires on lap 50 for the leader on pit road. Now Kyle learned something last night from the nationwide race. He was really good early and uh, maybe didn't adjust it to uh, for the change in track conditions. He's got that in the bank to kind of go from today. So the only one that hasn't stopped, you see top of the screen there, Ryan Newman, the race leader. And here is Newman bailing out off the track now off of turn number four to complete the cycle of pit stops. See there with Brad Keselowski, he literally lost three spots there to the five, uh, the 24 and 48. Just by staying out there a lap longer. And here's Newman, Vince. Ryan Newman fighting a little bit tight across the center. It's going to be a four-tire change for Ryan Newman, working with crew chief Matt Borland for just the fourth time this season, trying to establish a rhythm that will help them next season. As you see on the right side of your screen, Brad Keselowski and Jeff Gordon doing battle. All right, so things are going to cycle back around to Kyle Busch. Oh, man, tires look fine. Tires look virtually great, actually. They look really good. Here's the update uh, back to Brad Kozlowski on what those tires look like. Remember, he was the one that was concerned. They said he worked the tires pretty hard. Johnson passing Kozlowski as they exited from the stops. A whole slew of them on the bottom lane off at two. Still outside coming to you. Out. Johnson running seven, Kozlowski running in ninth position. Yeah, the biggest difference here is not in the, the pit stops or, or even how they got on and off pit road. It's really those couple, or actually a lap or two, that Jimmy pitted earlier. He ran a couple of seconds quicker on those laps than, say, the Kozlowski car could. Older. So, through a round of green flag pit stops, and Kyle Busch continues out in front, and the two says tires look good. Johnson and Brad Kozlowski. This is Kozlowski trying to pass Johnson. It's been Jimmy, as he should, trying to plant the seeds of doubt in his younger rival for the title's mind all week long. Jimmy's not going to wreck him or do anything like that, but in this scenario where the two car down at the bottom and Jimmy crowds him a little bit, make him get in that corner a little harder zone, make him make a mistake without ever touching him. On the other side of the coin, if you're Brad, and you know this guy's got to beat you by a bunch, and you're right there in his mirror, right through his inside door. He's not going to fall for the bait. He <laughs> just, you can see right there. He made a little run at him, showed him the left front, or showed him the fender there. He just dropped back behind him. 
Hey, I'm here. Yeah, I'm right here. One thing about this track, see Ambrose in the nine going way up the top. Some of these guys will go all the way to that outside wall looking for that last little bit of grip that they can find. And sometimes that wall comes up a little closer than you expected at these speeds. Yeah, you have to run so close to it. And the only way that can kind of tell you that if you've been on the interstate and, and where they're doing road construction and you have those barriers that kind of narrow the lane down, you'd always realize you grip the steering wheel a little harder and you're a little more tense in that. These drivers are the same way when you do that. You tense up a little bit until you know you've got it under control in that because you know the margin for error is so small. Terry Gant used to love running up next to the wall. I asked him one time, I said, how do you know when you're that close? How can you run that close to the wall? You know what he told me? So you can smell it. Smell it. <laughs> <laughs> I always felt like that you could definitely feel it. And it was always, I always felt like that there was a little cushion of air there. It's a great battle. These guys have battled all year throughout this chase. Had great racing. But I just felt like that there was that little bit of cushion right there. You could get over that cushion if you weren't careful. This two cars handling really good, though. I think it looked like they had made some good adjustments and Brad being extremely careful, but still moving forward past some good cars. Jimmy Johnson said during NASCAR countdown when he visited the pit studio live that, you know, he can't do anything foolish. So expecting Jimmy to take any kind of a risk there, it's too early in the race. He can't, he can't. You know, there, there's a difference between the risk you'll take at lap 250 of 267 and the risk you'll take now at lap 63, right? Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, as this race goes on, historically, we have somewhere close to 20 cars that finish on the lead lap. So we're not going to be able to say, even though Brad might be running in front of Jimmy, which looks like everything will be just fine. But if that gets up towards the front where that's happening and Jimmy's close enough to the front, if Brad should have any kind of issue late in the race, with that many cars on the lead lap, then it could change things dramatically. Don't forget, check out NASCAR.com slash race buddy. Watch coverage live today from Homestead Miami Speedway by following your favorite drivers for free with eight live camera views. Keslowski by Johnson. They run sixth and seventh. And you have not missed a thing at the front of the pack because Kyle Busch is out front by three seconds. And like he did a week ago at Phoenix, he's put a hurting on the field early. Two drivers competing for the final shot at a NASCAR Spring Cup Series championship trophy. Jimmy Johnson, Brad Keselowski, and in the opening 100 miles of today's 40 Eagles 400, They've been the most entertaining racing. Kyle Busch has put a hurting on the field up front. The top five kind of spread out, but Keselowski and Johnson racing for sixth and seventh positions, each taking turns, haunting the other in the rear view mirror and poking around inside and out, kind of trying to play those mind games behind the wheel at 180 miles an hour. We're caution free so far in the race. Kyle Busch has done <laughs> most of the leading. Marcus Ambrose led the opening 14 laps. Ryan Newman led one on an exchange of green flag pit stops with Kyle Busch early and often. Three guys who started the race at the back of the field in backup cars have done most of the moving, but Hamlin, Logano, and Biffle have all kind of stalled out midfield. top two in the championship continue to provide the closest racing at this point Dave and I'm not sure that's something that two team really wants to see. Oh man it's good for the fans though isn't it? Look at Jimmy come up to the bumper there and as he does so spotter for Brad Joey Meyer just gives him the basic information oh Johnson gets so close that time basic information because last night working the nationwide series race for rookie Ryan Blaney he did a lot more talking and Brad told him I want you to make sure that for me you only tell me the facts and let me make the decisions. Doc? And Jimmy Johnson really likes the adjustments they made on the pit stop. He went out on the radio and said, guys, we have got ourselves a race car. He promptly then blew by the two car. And two laps later, he heard this on the radio. Just settle in here, bud. Don't sweat it. We do need to try to back off the brakes a little bit, man. Just a lot of brakes. So he 
backed off on the brakes. He pulled back and let the two car go by. And right now he's very content to ride there and give uh, Brad K a rear view mirror full of a five time champion. On board Jimmy Johnson at 189 miles an hour on our mobile one telemetry. I just don't know. I, I, I couldn't keep my mouth shut if I was a spotter. I would say, let him go. <laughs> I mean, there's no real reason to be racing him at this point. I know that's not what, what Brad wants to hear. He'll make the decision. He'd make good decisions on the track, but he finally does look like he's going to let him go. Brad said to us before the race, he said, I'm just going to run my race. I don't want to change up what I normally do. Obviously, he's sticking to that game plan for the most part. And I don't know about your reaction, but I heard him say that, and, and my first reaction was, yeah, okay, we'll see what happens when you get in the race. But he's kind of sticking to it. He's making it happen, and that's what he's done. I mean, he's been very much in control uh, of this race car throughout the entire chase, knowing what he's capable of and what he's not at that particular time. I think the information that Jimmy was given about staying off the brake, I saw more brake dust on the 48 and the 2 than what you would like to see when they took those front tires off. Uh, on that last pit stop, but I think that's kind of natural, especially here this time of the, the race and starting out. Yeah, one of the reasons you're hearing that from Chad Knauss is that's the problem they had last week. They actually overheated the right front tire with the brakes and blew that right front out. That's not likely to happen here, but I'm sure that's still on his mind, and when he saw that brake dust, at least he needs to give that information to Jimmy and tell him that they need to back off the brakes just a little bit. This is the driver's going by Ricky Stenhouse Jr. in the sixth winner of a second straight NASCAR Nationwide Series Championship that he walked up here yesterday and provided a case study in going about racing for that championship with everything <laughs> to lose in the final laps the way you want to and not necessarily the conservative way. Well, he got the job done. He put himself in some positions that I think a lot of us were questioning, but he made it happen just like he always has. How many laps has Kyle Busch led this fall? And not found a way to go to victory lane at the end of the race. And I'm not saying that as to make it reflect on Kyle, but just this team has led a lot of laps, and yet they haven't taken home a trophy through a variety of circumstances. They got Carl Edwards closing in quickly now from second place. Yeah, Carl doing a nice job here today. He seemed very optimistic during practice that he could come here and do what he needed to do last year, and that was to win the race. That was a three-second lead between the 18 and the 99. Now it's seven-tenths. Debris, yeah, debris on yeah, the back debris. straightaway. And the caution flag out for the first time in the race. Someone, one of the race teams had reported it into NASCAR, and then one of NASCAR spotters called it in and said, yes, sir. And here we are. Under caution for the first time, over a quarter distance right, into this thing. So first breather, first regroup moment for these drivers and teams today. All on pit road between laps 42 and 50 earlier. And now another 30 and change laps later for some of the early people to stop. They'll get a chance to go at another round of adjustments. Yeah, welcome stop because then obviously under green flag conditions and you don't want to waste much time under caution, but you can take the time to make it adjustments that you think may be a little bit bigger and anticipating making the car better. Yeah, one thing we saw last night is that every time that these cars made pit stops, is that things were changing. You'd find another group of cars that were up front and some of them really struggling. Every time they, they would change tires or make a change in the chassis, it was really making a big difference in the car, sometimes not in the way they wanted. Well, it's a team sport, and uh, these guys who train all week long just for these 12 seconds that they go yeah. over the wall. I was all front brakes and I went to rear for uh, and I still was good in. Copy. Now get their chance to try and uh, help the cause. Yeah, this is a. Uh, I'm sure that Paul Wolf in particular is telling his guys, slow, steady. I mean, you know, they obviously aren't just going to slow down, but he's talking about not making a mistake. Yeah, you just don't want to push too hard right now. Just, just make a nice, smooth stop. And if you do that, they're usually going to be around that 12 to 14 seconds, and that's all they need right now.
all the lead lap cars. We'll take the opportunity. We'll see if anybody tries some strategy to get some track position. Doc? Jimmy Johnson said the previous adjustment worked, but the car was starting to free up, so Chad said we'll add some more to what we did before. But he said also the car is not where we need yet, speed-wise. We're still not with the best guys here. Four tires, top it off with Sunoco fuel. Dave. Championship leader gives up seventh position. He said, I need a touch more drive off, and my car is clumsy into turn number one. It'll be down on the track bar, a little air pressure out of the left rear, and a four-tire change for Brad. Good smooth pit stop so far. And get a little fuel, and he's out. Yeah, the two cars struggled on the right rear. I don't know what they were doing over there. If they were making a chassis adjustment or what it was, but they had some problems on the right side. And he says slow and easy. Next time, he might need to quantify that a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Watch the right rear here. Now, Brad was a little off right there, too. They, they hung a lug down. That's what happens when you try to go just a little bit too quickly. Right there, make you throw, make some mistake, and that's one that'll cost you a lot of time when you don't get all the lug nuts off. First caution out here at Homestead. Week here in South Florida. Find some nice places to hang out. Down on South Beach, along Biscayne Bay, and today here at Homestead Miami Speedway, where it will be awarded to Brad Keselowski or Jimmy Johnson at the end of the Ford EcoBoost 400. We're under the first caution flag that came out over 100 miles into the race for debris on the back straightaway. Since this chase for the NASCAR Sprint Cup format has come into being, Jimmy Johnson has been dominant. Some 90 races being completed today, and Jimmy Johnson with 22 wins as we race through history with Lowe's. Certainly, Jimmy's made a lot of history with Lowe's. Yeah, sure has. That's an just outstanding performance during this chase time. Jimmy lined up on the outside of row three for the restart in sixth position. Brad Kozlowski falling from seventh to 13th after the slow pit stop. Kyle Busch hung on to the lead. He chose the outside lane for the restart. Three wide, Truex Jr. dives to the bottom of Edwards and Kenseth. Johnson, this is close as he's been to the front for sure. Brad Keselowski's back where he does not want to be. He does have his teammate behind him, Sam Hornish in the 22. It's not going to be much of a help if one of these cars in front of him spins, huh? I'd follow that 55. He doesn't spin out much, so it's hang around him. Mark Martin, pretty good guy. Yeah. Kyle Busch, Martin Truex Jr., Matt Kenseth, first, second, and third. Clint Boyer clearing Carl Edwards for fourth. Jimmy Johnson in sixth. Had such a great run going at Phoenix last week. Got caught up in that last lap accident. Carl Edwards was second on this restart of that 99 car. Now he's back there racing with Johnson for fifth and sixth. Yeah, really sliding back. I don't know if it's an adjustment they made, this set of tires, but uh, this doesn't seem to be the Carl's liking right now. He was actually chasing Kyle Busch down before that caution came out. Followed back a lot since the start. Marco Sambros in the nine. Who started up front, led the opening 14 laps of the race. Here's for the lead. Truex, 56. Trying to find a lane to the inside of Kyle Busch, Dave. He called in, it's blowing up, and then he quickly radioed back. Now it's running, now it's running. So definite problems under the hood of the M&M's Camry.
When Kyle Busch is leading the race, what would cause him to jump on the radio with a transmission like that? Well, listen. your heart and heartbeat. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what that could be. It could be some kind of electrical thing. But it seems to be fine now. Yeah, the 11 had a problem at Martinsville uh, that was somewhat similar to that. Cutting out would run a little bit. Turned out to be that master switch problem that was yeah. improperly installed and wound up taking Denny Hamlin out of a chance to win this championship. So after restarting 13th, Brad Kozlowski up to 10th place, Dave. And nothing gets a crew chief off the pit box like a slow stop. And that's what happened with Paul Wolf. Calmly, he came down the stairs, talked with rear tire changer Colin Fambro, asked him what happened. They talked through it, and then Paul calmly went back up. These guys don't work under a cloud of immense pressure. Paul is very laid back, so is the driver. And when mistakes happen, they move on. So, Andy, when the crew chief comes off that box to have that conversation, as Truex goes for the lead here on Kyle Busch, is that the yelling, screaming football coach type conversation, or what, what happens? No, there? right there, you're just saying, hey, look here, just calm down. I know that's, that we're all nervous. It's a big race. So just, you really need to slow down. You almost have to make yourself slow down because the villain is so high on everybody on the team that you try to just uh, do it too quick. You try to make that wrench go just a little faster than it wants to go. And that, they left that lug nut hanging on there, and that, uh, that's just nothing but nerves. And now that they've made a stop or two, I think that'll settle out. Yeah, and something I pointed out earlier in the week, instead of making, trying to make just a 15th place car, this two team worked hard to make their car really good. So in case they got back in traffic, Brad could drive through that. And that's what he's been able to do. Just take his time, work his way back up inside the top 10. So that was hard work and effort on their part there. Now Kyle Busch fended off the challenge from Truex for the race lead. Now Truex has got his hands full with Kenseth and Boyer. And I remind you to stay tuned for NASCAR nonstop coverage during the second half of today's race presented by Goodyear. Aerial coverage provided by Goodyear from pit lane to victory lane. Every NASCAR driver counts on Goodyear tires. Goodyear, the official tire of NASCAR. And while Kyle Busch continues to lead at Homestead Miami Speedway, we remind you that coverage of the EA Sports Maui Invitational continues tomorrow with a doubleheader of quarterfinals on ESPN2. 3.30, it's Brad Stevens' Bulldogs taking on Buzz Williams' Golden Eagles. Then at 6, Rick Ray leads his Bulldogs against Roy Williams and the Heels. Butler Marquette at 3.30, then Mississippi State, North Carolina at 6. Tomorrow on ESPN2 and live on Watch ESPN. It's part of Feast Week presented by Lowe's ESPN, the home court of college hoops. I believe it's that time. Wonder what I'd be doing March 6th. Now I know. Yeah, that's right. Watch the heels. We've been watching a lot of this 18 car out in front. In today's season finale for the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series, Homestead Miami Speedway, Kyle Busch has led 83 of 98 laps as we go up to speed and start with the leader, Dave Burns. Kyle Busch has two problems right now, Alan. We've documented the fact that he has some sort of electrical issue. They've asked him to go to running both batteries. That's one option that he has. He also is losing lateral grip in the shady parts of the track, and that'll become the whole track here in about an hour. Vince? Running in second is the 56 of Martin Truex Jr. in the chase for the second time in his career. This chase hasn't worked out the way they'd hoped, of course, but getting their first win of the season here today would be huge. He's chasing down Kyle. His crew has let him know that Kyle might be experiencing some power issues. And to keep his heads up. Doc? And back behind him in third spot, Matt Kenseth. An emotional day for Matt when you talk to him in the garage or Jimmy Finnick of the crew. 14 years, 24 wins for Ralph Fenway. His final race with the team, and boy, does he want to go to victory lane. He's got a good race car right now. He said, I'm a little free on this throttle. Vince. Running in fourth is the 15th of Clint Boyer. Getting here to Homestead with a chance to still win the chase. That was their goal. But getting wrecked last week at Phoenix took that chance away. They're angry about it. They hope to take it out with a victory this afternoon. Right now, Boyer's car, fast. But it's a tick free. Jamie? And Jeff Gordon behind him. This team's been angry all season long at Clint Boyer. Crew Chief Alan Gustafson, as they go side by side, told me Jeff wrecked him for the team. He didn't do it for selfish reasons. He did it to stand up for them, and they do not fault him for that. His car this run, Alan, is getting better.
For Chef Gordon, find $100,000 by NASCAR. Dock 25 championship points for that late race incident in Phoenix last weekend. Your thoughts on what happened there in Phoenix first, and then will it carry over right now? Well, let me address first about right now. I'm not sure that fourth place means that much to Jeff Gordon right at this point in time. I don't think he's sure exactly how Boyer gotten over this, but I think what Jeff Gordon, as a competitor, I understand getting to that level. Not saying it was the right thing to do, but sometimes you just feel like that's what you have to do. And he's got to be careful right now, though. He, like I said, he didn't know just how much Clint Boyer is over this thing. This is the first time we've seen them run side by side since the incident. I, don't, I see Jeff kind of taking it easy, being a little bit careful. I think he wants to make sure that he can make a good, clean pass before he gets up there and starts running wheel to wheel with Clint. Jeff said his regrets about it were letting the emotions get the best of him. He said that wasn't the way he should have dealt with it, but that it did need to be dealt with. Now, there were people that said, well, it wasn't something you should expect out of a four-time champion. Well, they were. He didn't feel like he'd been treated like a champion over the uh, last few weeks with Clint Boyer and the way he got wrecked earlier in the year at Martinsville. And I think he just kept building up, like you said, to him. And he just had enough. Been plenty of champions through many kinds of sports and even businesses that sometimes lost their cool in certain situations. Fourth place here. And Gordon's going to slide up in front of Boyer. And claim that spot. Kick Clint back to fifth. Jimmy Johnson in sixth. Brad Keselowski up to eighth after restarting in 13th. Everybody's chasing, as they have been most of this race. Kyle Busch out in front of the Ford EcoBoost 400. Laps, it is Kyle Busch out front by about a half a second. Meanwhile, in our five-hour energy rapid recap, some very close racing between number one in points and number two. Yeah, Brett Keselowski and Jimmy Johnson are throwing a neck-and-neck -neck ride here. And really, neither one of them gets, giving it so much of a breathing room. In fact, it looks like Keselowski trying to intimidate Johnson just a little bit. Here comes Johnson back at it. But early racing so far between these two championship contenders. They spent 11 laps like that until they were separated by a slow stop from Brad Keselowski. Fell from 7th to 14th. Trouble with the right rear. However, this is them also playing it safe. Yeah, absolutely. Everybody's trying to make sure they get everything done exactly right. They did have a slow stop, a little bit of hesitancy on that right rear, but they're still back up in the top 10 running. This is a Jimmy Johnson must win situation. This is a Brad Keselowski. I can play it safe. He just have to finish 15th or better to win the championship. Yeah, and it's really early in the day. We know the track is going to change. I think both those guys are feeling each other out to find out about speed, being careful until the lights come on. When the lights come on, the track will be as it's going to finish. I want to uh, welcome inside the ESPN Pit Studio someone that's been an honorary member of our race team pretty much since the chase started, and that is Kid Rock, who, by the way, Rebel Soul, comes out tomorrow. You're a race fan. Yes, What's it like to be here on uh, Championship Sunday? It's great. It's a lot of fun driving that uh, driving that pace car around too. I gotta say, a little bit of horse. A little slower from a little slower than I would normally like for my <laughs> taste, but you know was happy to do it. Hey, you've done a great job. We, we've watched you every every week leading up to the chase doing these intros for ESPN. Thanks. What's the experience been like working for the folks for ESPN, getting those done? You know, it's been great. It's been a lot of fun. It's it's cool to see NASCAR really do something like that to really, you know, kick it in, you know, when, when the race is going to start and get yeah. it going. And, and I had a blast doing it, and I've got a lot of compliments on them. It's great when I got the record coming out to have something to go hand in hand with that. And, you know, by being a race fan, it's like, two and two it's a win-win for everything sure. I, get, I get to come here rather than go sit around award shows or something like that <laughs> watch one of my nice. favorite sports and now that i'm done working maybe enjoy a cold beverage there you go my man well it sounds, it sounds like you're a big fan of uh, racing from detroit yes. and uh, team penske roger penske's mm -hmm. up in detroit mm -hmm. uh you kind of pull for that two car i am a little bit it's tough because jimmy's an old friend yeah giving me a couple cup rings you know been real good to me and uh as a smoke and junior but you know keselowski you know i'm Michigan to the bone, Detroit to the bone. Roger's a friend. Keselowski's become friends. Uh, my guitar player hangs out with him all the time. Nice kid. And, you know, it's, it's hard not to go for the young gun. Yeah, I hear you. So it is a two-car for you today. It is. Okay. <laughs> you, you're talking about Detroit. Great with the music, great with us with the TV, but you've done a lot of great things in Detroit. I've never seen such motivation come from one man. What, what other kind of good things you got going on there? Well, it's just another year of, you know, trying to, uh, you know, pull out of that, uh, that tough situation we've been in e economically. And, you know, it, it, it could go on for days. But uh, yeah, I've just been blessed to be successful and really be in the position I am. So I just feel it's the least I can do is, is I think it's always most important to help out your neighbors first. And 
that's my neighborhood, so I choose to just try and try and make a little better place, do whatever I can. And Rogers done some great things there too, as a lot of people are. That's awesome. Well, Kid Rock, thanks for uh, being part of our team, and thanks for coming to hang out with us in the pit studio. By the way, check out the battle on the racetrack between Martin Truex Jr. in the 56 and Kyle Busch out front. That is a gap that's been closing over the last few laps. And there he is up front, Martin Truex Jr. Green flag stops coming up. We are 117 laps complete during the final race of this season. We'll be back from Miami in a second. The last stand. That's what Homestead is all about. Fear, doubt, indecision. Leave it all behind. One team will use the lessons of the last nine weeks to take what is given, when it's given. All that matters is the fight in front of you. I want to celebrate. We are almost halfway to the celebration of the NASCAR Spring Cup champion for 2012. Coming up on the midway point of today's Ford EcoBoost 400. A race that's been dominated by Kyle Busch and a race in where Jimmy Johnson has moved up. And Brad Kozlowski lost some ground on the last round of pit stops, and you see where they run at this point in time. Remember that Jimmy needs to beat Brad by around 20 positions in this race in order to take the championship away on the final day of the season. Martin Truex Jr. got the lead from Kyle Busch. Now in traffic, Truex is struggling a little bit, and Kyle looks like he's going to get it back. Or not. Now Kyle was able to gain there. Truex just can't seem to take his car down to the bottom and make any speed off the corner at all. Kyle's trying to do it. That's really difficult right now. These tires are worn. Whoa, that's going to be close. Wow. Close call there. some of this lap traffic and Kyle's lucky after that last time around off turn two that car's in one piece nice job him you can hear him right there he had to get out of the throttle just a little bit this car's really sliding around right now Landon Castle in the 83 Casey Mears in the 13 hello yeah, that was even close. You can see Truex was struggling with his car. He was trying to go for it, stay in the gas. Yeah, they're not getting a lot of help from the lap cars, though. Castle, that was two, taking him two laps down. He's kind of parked up there in that preferred line in the high side, not really yielding to the leader. Tricky stuff late in the long green flag run as the tires have worn and we close in on another set of pit stops. We check out the at and Fastest Driver Challenge and out of the top four qualifiers, Carl Edwards is closest to the front. Remember to text FAST to 34763 to play AT&T's Fastest Driver Challenge or visit attfastestdriver.com. You could have a chance to win four Gs just by playing. Look at that, how close that was. The leader, Martin Truex Jr., trying to find a lane around one Pablo Montoya. And it looks like the window's open for that next round of pit stops. Truex may be one heading to pit road here quickly, too. Mark Martin in, Doc. Mark Martin a little bit loose on entry, loose on exit. Four tires, top it off with steel. A little air pressure adjustment. Mark likes running the bottom of the racetrack. Looks like to move up high when there's more grip, so they really got to get the car tighter for him. The 56 of Martin Truex Jr. making his way toward his pit box, and Martin just commented, boy, the sun is brutal coming down this pit lane. Early in the race, the front end was unresponsive. That's the change that they've been working on throughout the course of these initial pit stops. It's going to be a four-tire change for Truex. No chassis adjustments being called for. Chad Johnson, the crew chief, has this car just about where he wants it. They're just adjusting to the track at this point. It's slight air pressure adjustment on the 56. 
championship note Jimmy Johnson led that last lap bonus point for Jimmy Johnson he's into the pits now doc and that's why he stayed on the track one extra lap Alan they wanted to be able to lead that lap and get the point Jimmy says the car is free in free exit tight middle Chad can now say what should I fix first he said you gotta fix the free on exit so I can use the throttle chassis adjustment right rear four tires and Jimmy's away okay Brad Keselowski is a little bit loose in, a little bit loose off, but the tight in the middle is what bothers him the most. So they'll make a track bar adjustment and a four-tire stop. Colin Fambro nicely around the back this time, and that's a much better stop. Like yeah, you said, Eddie. Looks like the nerves are settled down a little bit in that two-pit. Yeah, I saw that. Uh, they did a great job. Looked like Brad was extremely cautious getting to his pit box, and that could have been because of that sun, not being exactly sure where those lines are for his pit area. Matt Kenseth, the race leader, now beginning to slow to come to the pit lane. Keselowski's crew doing a good job. Of Sub 13 second four tire stop. But you can also see that drive time, like you said, Dale, is a little bit longer for Keselowski. Doc? Left side tire is going on the 2007 winner here. He said the car is really good. I got good grip, car very neutral. I think Matt Kansas said we got something for him when it gets dark and we get even more grip than we got now. And as Kenseth exits, Ryan Newman enters the pit lane. And that'll complete the cycle of stops one more time. Newman and Vince. Still tight in the middle for the 39 of Ryan Newman. They're going to make an air pressure adjustment. Also wedge out of the left rear for uh, Ryan in the 39 car. Just tight across the middle to what they've been fighting throughout the course of the day. Clean stop for the 39. So on the exchange of pit stops, the track position ever so slightly exchange for the top spot between Truex and Bush. Yeah, I don't know. That's a big surprise. You see Truex coming back on him pretty quickly here now. But Kyle Bush, one of the best, if not the best, getting onto and off of pit road. <laughs> That's close. I'm going to say running up on him like that's fun for Truex, but not so fun for Kyle. I promise you, it's not much fun than the driver in front there because it takes so much downforce away in the back of the car. You, know, you, you just got to go by feel right there. And if you drove it the way that you'd been driving it, you were going to be quite a bit freer. So on the exchange of pit stops, Kyle Busch barely back in front of Martin Truex Jr. as we've just crossed halfway in the Ford EcoBoost 400, the final race of the season for the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series. It was the exchange of pit stops that traded the lead, actually the exit of the pit lane that traded the lead. X and drag racing to get Kyle Busch back in front. Good racing. As we go NASCAR nonstop today presented by Goodyear. One and two separated by about one car length just past halfway in the final race of this season. We take an inside look and get unlimited access to the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series. Brought to you by the NASCAR Sprint Cup mobile app and truly unlimited data on the Sprint Network. Tony Stewart has had the fastest four tire pit stop today. Unfortunately, Smoke is the last car on the lead lap in 24th place at the moment. The biggest mover, Joey Logano, won pole position in qualifying, was in a practice crash Saturday, had to start at the back. He's raced his way all the way up to 13th position at this point. And we remind you to get unlimited access to NASCAR with live in-car audio and real-time stats on the NASCAR Sprint Cup mobile app. Only from Sprint, get the app and truly unlimited data at sprint.com slash speed caution flag for debris on the front straightaway mm. 
Martin through the entire first half of this race with just the one yellow flag. A lot of times you get a race pattern like that. You get about eight of them in the second half of the race. Yeah, don't be surprised that that might not happen again. The two drivers here put on a great show up at the front for sure. Both of them really needing a win. Racing all over the racetrack on the access road yeah. and exit. So Pace Car will come out and pick up the field just after they finished a round of green flag pit stops. So Andy, just a thought here about Tony Stewart. We mentioned how far back he is in the running order. Is this this the place where Steve Addington tries a little strategy to gain him some track position? No, well, nothing else has worked so far. They've, <laughs> had, they've had a sub 12 second board tire stop and it still has him at the tail end of the lead lap. Nick, I've tried something. The problem is, it's like Steve said to start with, this track is really a four tire racetrack. It just loses so much grip after you run a few laps. Well, I'd have to, oh, I'd have to override that. Yeah. I'd sit there as a driver. <laughs> My car's driving that bad. You only want to put two tires on. I'm gonna sit there. <laughs> you get the other two. <laughs> I just thought I'd ask. Yeah, no, that's yeah. a good question, man. I mean, I'm just saying from the driver's standpoint. Yeah, you got to try something. And he owns it, so they can't disagree with him. So. <laughs> Everybody coming back in, it looks like. And Jimmy Johnson will be the first of these leaders to his pit stall, Doc. Jimmy said the exit is much better with the adjustment still very, very tight in the middle. So the car sits really hard on the right rear. He told Chad the first adjustment you made really helped the car. So they make another adjustment to the seat down and away here after four tires, two tires. Dave. Kedlowski gets up 11. The takeoff was worse, but that was expected. That was his strength last time. Brad feels like it would have held on a little bit better. They'll take four tires. They'll get a track bar adjustment. Well, a little strategy session has, in fact, played out here. So what do you think about that two-tire call there, dude? We'll see. I <laughs> reserve judgment. I don't know about that. I'm not too much in favor. I thought they were just getting their car where they could compete up front. We saw last night, though, uh, with the Nationwide Race, it seemed like the two-tires were okay uh, if you didn't have a lot of laps on the lefts, but there's uh, these cup cars a little different. We'll see how they act. I have six, one, two, three, four, five, six cars that took right side tires. They're headed by Jimmy Johnson, who will come off pit lane with the race lead. Championship bonus points for Johnson. And a chance to gain a little ground here on a restart. Homestead, Miami Speedway, where we're under caution for the second time. Jimmy Johnson trying to win a sixth championship, but if he's going to do that, perhaps a little bit of a Hail Mary in this race. And maybe we just saw it in the form of some strategy on a pit stop. Jimmy Johnson just two tires. Brad Keselowski, four. When they go back to green, Johnson will start first. Ke first, Keselowski, 15th. Ray, crew chief, you like it? Yeah, I do like it because you're still less than half of a run on, on fuel. So I think that there's something. This is not just a, a Hail Mary. If you look at the, the top ten right now, this is something that's been discussed between the Hendrick camp because Casey Kane and Dale Earnhardt Jr. also did the same thing. They've got some information. Well, I'll tell you, the one thing that's got me nervous right now as a driver, Ray, if I'm sitting back there 15th with four tires on and I'm looking up there and I know that my, my rival, Jimmy Johnson, the guy I'm chasing, is sitting there leading this thing. Hey, I'm getting a little bit nervous. I know I'm only 147 laps in this race with 120 to go, Brad, but still, hey, I'm not liking that, man. I want to be up there with this cat. Great call by the 48 team. Put themselves in position, getting off sequence on, with the two tires. They're giving themselves a, champ, a chance to go out and win this championship. Keselowski's going to have to march through the field. He's got four tires, but he's going to have to go get that 48. Great job by the 48. Keselowski just has to finish 15 to win the championship, Jimmy Johnson pretty much has to win it. Alan? All right, Nicole, so as we get set to go racing, Jeff Burton, the free pass, 11 cars took a wave around, only Ricky Stenhouse of them getting back on the lead lap, and you see the running order for the restart with Jimmy Johnson, the leader now, and Brad Keselowski back in 15th position. Definitely has made this interesting now, and uh, certainly with Brad being back there that far, 
A lot of things happen back there on these restarts. Yeah, especially when you got cars up front with two tires, some cars behind them with four, and the faster cars that we've seen today back there with four tires could get interesting. First one off the pit lane with four tires is Kyle Busch in seventh spot. Let's see how this segment of the race plays into things. in a hurry to get back to the front. And they're three wide. See, the points are tied right now as they're running. His husk has kind of got locked down on the bottom. I think that's where he really likes his race car. See if he can make some pass and get some of this back. Has to be feeling a little more pressure now with uh, Jimmy Johnson out front. Even though he knows he's got those two tires, I don't know that anybody knows exactly how that's going to play out. And what Kozlowski needs is just to let this race for a couple laps and let some of it settle out and then try to pass some of these cars. He knows he's got a better car than a lot of these guys ahead of them, but there's no need to force the issue until they settle down. The racetrack is really cooled down. You can see it's just shaded all the way around. That could be playing into the favor of guys that just took two tires. They've got 15 laps on the left side tires, the guys that took two. Looks like it's working really good for Jimmy Johnson. He also gets that clean air on the nose by having that lead. That's sometimes worth more than left side tires. Kyle Busch to third. He took that run to the inside on that restart three wide. Joey Logano moved down a little bit to block, and everybody got through it cleanly. But that could have been a big moment, too. Yeah, had a lot of Toyotas there arguing about space. Uh, had Logano there, Truex was trying to make his way to the inside. Kyle was having none of that. So a lot of exciting things happening. Carl Edwards running as high as second earlier in the race. Slipped back on a long green flag run. Now that's the car ahead of Keslowski there. There's Eric Almarola, 43, Mark Truex, 56 by Kenseth. Now Almarola having another very solid effort here on a mile and a half track. We saw him back in Kansas a few weeks ago. Be outstanding until they blew a right front tire, but uh, this team's really coming on here late. Sunset at 531 local time. Hang on, Truex. Wow. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. And the caution flags out. We'll, uh, get a look here when you come by. Get ready, guys. I don't know if he had a tire go down, but he's hit the wall really hard. He had just taken the wave around, so had not changed any tires under that last caution flag, not allowed to by NASCAR rule. And Sunday will not nearly be as happy as Saturday was for the Nationwide Series champ. Ooh, wow. Yeah, looks like he may have had a right front go down. You'd have to think that that may, because he still didn't have a lot of laps on those tires, so you'd have to think that Unless he was just really abusing. Yeah, that or he's back there racing pretty hard with people. Yeah. Maybe got up against the side of another car. Yeah. So, a lot of trouble there on that six car. And the pit road is still closed while they have some of the safety equipment on the track. And check to see that that six car didn't leave any further debris at the entry of the pit lane that might cause more problems. Now, I'll tell you the other thing, they would have to make this two team a little bit nervous with each of these cautions. That puts somebody else back on the lead lap. 
once again, go back. If you have a problem uh, late, then that's just going to put you that much further down the list. This time it'll be Bobby Labonte that gets back on the lead lap with the free pass. Bobby took a wave around to get back to one lap down on the uh, prior restart. One, one thing I worry about with this particular caution is you see how he, hard he hit the wall. That usually breaks the right front rotor. Those little pieces are hard to see on the racetrack. And you can get uh, run over under caution, get a flat tire. That was a two car. That's one thing I would be worried about at this point. Let me tell my driver, just leave some distance between you and the guy in front of you. Just kind of make sure you don't run over something that's obviously there. So caution out for the third time in the Ford Eagle Boost 400, the final race of the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series season for 2012. We're just shy of 250 miles into the day. The day that's been dominated by Kyle Busch up front. Jimmy Johnson has led, is leading right now. Brad Keselowski has not led thus far today. The two run have run pretty close in proximity for much of the race until this last round of pit stops about five minutes ago when Johnson's team went for right sides only and went to the lead while Keselowski's team made the conservative four tire call and started a little bit deeper in the pack their 14th right now. Doc? Up on the box with Chad Canals who made the uh, gutsy call. Chad, a little bit of strategy here. Two right side tires puts you out front and pressure on the two car. Now, how has this helped your car? Jimmy said the car is better than it's been all day. Yeah, the race car is really good. I couldn't be prouder of the efforts that everybody's put in this weekend and everybody from Hendrick Motorsports to put us in a position to come down here and, and battle for the championship. It's, uh, it's been a great season. And today the car has been pretty solid all day long. I don't know that that was uh, that much of a gutsy call. There were quite a few other guys took two tires behind us. But, you know, we got some solid track position. We just need to try to maintain that for the rest of the event. And, Hopefully we can get out here with a solid top 10 effort. You know, we'll just do the best we can all day long. All right, Chad Canals uh, talking to Jimmy Johnson. Jimmy took off, so the car feels really good. Of course, that's uh, the clean air too, Alan. Doesn't hurt a thing. No, no, that helps a lot. It, I think it really sets us up for later in the race, some interesting strategy if this continues to work for this 48 team and the others. Uh, Casey Kane there with two tires and a few others. And speaking of strategy and interesting later in the race, you already hear Jimmy Johnson saving fuel under the caution flag. Feel pretty good. Your things is fluid. <laughs> Our mobile one telemetry doesn't often show zero in the RPM gauge, does it? <laughs> But it's been so much a part of the story of the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series 2012. The strategies, when the competition's so close, it puts even more pressure on getting your car out in front through any means available. Jim Road remains closed, so let's uh, check in with the other end of the championship story and Dave Burns. Maybe just over 100 laps remaining now, and that's a couple of runs, meaning you could bisect that by one pit stop, one more pit stop. They were discussing possibly coming down pit road, but since there was a lengthy cleanup, they're just going to go ahead and stay out right now and uh, save a little fuel at this point. The car this time, not really to uh, Brad's liking, a lot tighter on the restart. In fact, Paul told him that was four laps right there, and Brad said, whew, that felt like a lot more than four laps. How bad. I'll guarantee you it does. When you're racing like that and knowing what's at stake, uh, everything going on around you, just, you know, time kind of slows down there, and you, you think that you've done a whole lot more than what's actually happened at times. Brad handled it very well so far, though. So, uh, so funny how so yeah, often the, uh, in these final races well, of the we season. Had that really long run before that green bike pit stop. Uh, I would say it was definitely rolling the middle, but I didn't have great drive either, so. It was really both. The car was just kind of disconnected, similar to how it was in practice when I didn't feel it was really good. Final bit of feedback from the driver as pit road is now open. Although we heard Dave say that the conversation in the two radio so far has been to stay out and not come in here under this yellow. So just finishing that thought, you get into these final races of the season where a guy has to finish 15th or better to, can, to lock up the title. And he winds up Here running 15th for yeah. a lot of the race. Two tires and fuel. Two tires, right side tires and fuel. Johnson gives up the lead, Doc. 
And you heard the radio, two right side tires and fuel, and last minute call. In fact, Jimmy wasn't coming on pit road, and Chad said, okay, pit if you can, pit. And Jimmy turned hard left, right side tires, no adjustments, and he goes all the way to the wall, headed down pit road. Not alone on the pit lane, but the two cars stayed out on the racetrack. About eight cars stayed out on the racetrack. Kozlowski will not be the leader, though, for the restart. We'll come back for the green flag. Hit it hard till the sun goes down. A hundred seven laps to go in the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series season. And a little strategy session has just shaken up the running order in the Ford EcoBoost 400. And on opposite sides of the strategy equation, the top two in the championship, Brad Kozlowski and Paul Wolf, deciding to leave the Blue Deuce on the racetrack under this yellow flag while Chad Knauss called Jimmy Johnson onto the pit lane for a couple of right side tires and a top off of the fuel. Having a conversation between us while we calculate the mileage and the number of laps left in the race and the track position and the wisdom of the strategy and what side of the coin did you vote for there between 2 and 48 and the opposite things they chose to do. Well, uh, first off, I like the uh, 48 teams being real aggressive here with the strategy, and the, I'm not sure that they'll be able to do this on one more stop, but they, they're going to try it. They're going to stretch it. They need to do it. Uh, the two car, I was almost in agreement, agreeing with them staying out here, but Dale brings up a good point. Well, I think they need to stay on the same strategy as the 48. That's all they're racing. Nobody else out there. And if, if the 48's thinking about making it, surely the two could. So Jimmy Johnson comes off the pit lane in ninth position. Brad Keselowski is running in seventh. Casey Kane, Kyle Busch, Truex, Kenseth, Edwards, Hornish, and Keselowski. Those are the seven that did not stop under the yellow flag. Kurt Busch was first off the pit lane in the 78. And here we go. Johnson by two of them in a corner. And yeah, they make this 48 car a lot better from the time this race started. You've got Johnson a race car that he can contend with now. That's 11th place. Kislowski's racing four with Ryan Newman. That's a tough spot right there. You go in low into the corner. The banking's not a lot of it there. Car gets a little bit light, especially the back end. Eric Almarola with a big run off turn four in the 43. So Kyle Busch has gone back to the lead by Casey Kane on the restart. Kane runs second. Truex Jr. is third. And watch the action on the restart here as they fanned out three wide into the corner. Uh, Keselowski has been extremely cautious on these restarts there. And it's given uh, some people around him getting up to speed a little bit quicker, putting himself in some uh, pretty precarious situations. You just watch the bottom. Gonna try to go three wide on you. Three wide. You're in the middle. Three wide. Three wide. Still three. Still now inside he, now. He's inside definitely being now. conservative. Still inside now. You got three here. You can see even short shifting on those restarts. Casey Kane going to try and get the lead back from Kyle Busch in the five. Wow. Casey drove it into three. Can he make it stick? Slides up in front of Kyle, but will Kyle have the run off the turn? Oh, yeah. 
he wouldn't have won if that had been the last lap, but it had been close. Yep. Now with the slide job this time, here comes Casey Kane back to the inside. Good stuff. Whoa, hang yeah. on to that five. Yeah, you can see Casey having to chase the car around quite a bit. He's able to stay up beside the 18, though. I was wondering what two tires versus four tires would do, and right here's the example with the five, with the two tires a couple of cautions ago. The 18 put on four that time. As this racetrack's cooled off, that might be a pretty good move. If you have a good race. Yeah, it looked like Casey just couldn't make that bottom lane work. So Kyle Busch hangs on to the lead. Casey Kane at one point in this race, Jamie, had slipped back a pretty good bit after a, a tough pit stop, but now he's up there racing for the top spot. Well, Alan, that's because this race car has been a work in progress on that long pit stop that took 19 seconds. They put a packer in the, the left front and took a packer out of the right front. So they made a lot of changes, but it made the car better. As you said, that last stop, he took right sides only, saying the car is just a little bit loose now, but they've been happy with it all weekend. And Jamie, you saw on the screen there, Casey as low as 19th after that 19 second pit stop you were talking about. And they rallied up to second. And this team, this five team, has been one of the better at these transition races that start in the heat of the afternoon and wind up under the lights later at night. You always think of the races at Charlotte, for example, where Kane won the Coca-Cola 600 Memorial Day weekend. Yeah, and always mile and a half tracks where you think about momentum and working the throttle a lot. Casey Kane's excellent at that. So Kyle Busch has clinched the bonus point for leading the most laps. Jimmy Johnson cannot earn max points in this race today as we go NASCAR nonstop. Homestead Miami is brought to you by Papa John's, official pizza sponsor of the NFL, and Lowe's. Lowe's never stop improving. Phenomenal would be a word to describe what the weather's been like on this Ford Championship weekend as we bring in the Ford EcoBoost 400, the final race of the NASCAR Sprint Cup season. 76 degrees at the Homestead Miami Speedway. And Kyle Busch, after that great fight for the lead with Casey Kane in the first several laps after the restart, has now put a little bit of a gap on Kane in second place. Time for an inside look and unlimited access to the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series, brought to you by the NASCAR Sprint Cup mobile app and truly unlimited data on the Sprint Network. Kyle Busch led the most laps today and clinched the bonus point for leading the most laps in this race. Unlimited access to NASCAR with live in-car audio and real-time stats is yours on the NASCAR Sprint Cup mobile app only from Sprint. Get the app and Sprint's truly unlimited data plan at Sprint.com slash speed. There's first, second, third, and fourth. Kyle Busch, Casey Kane, Martin Truex Jr., and Jimmy Johnson. up in front there Martin Truex just right next to the wall I think that he's been the closest to the wall all day of any of the other drivers they're all up there he just seems to want to flirt with that wall every single lap using every inch of the track into the corner let alone going in low and riding up to the wall so those are the top four Jeff Gordon's fifth Clint Boyer sixth Matt Kenseth seventh Eric Almirola, eighth, Kurt Busch, ninth, Sam Hornis, Jr., tenth. And there's the championship leader starting today. And as they run, Brad Keselowski, who's in 11th, Dave. Alan, they told him in that last uh, break that he, had, he was five laps short without saving. He needed to save five laps of fuel if they could get to one more stop. Now, remember, at Charlotte, they ran him dry on one of those economy runs. The following week, I talked to Paul about that. Did you change anything mechanically, procedurally? And he said, no. In fact, I was more worried when we were doing it at Dover. I was surprised at Charlotte. It may have been an ambient temperature.
temperature thing. It got very cool that night. More horsepower eats more fuel. So they really haven't changed much, but they got to be careful they don't run them dry. Key here, they got five laps that they're short over two runs. So they, they can possibly make that up. Uh, that'd be a couple of three laps per per tank full of fuel. Check out the smile there yeah, on Paul. Seems to be pretty loose, doesn't it? Whatever they're talking about on their private radio channel, which the teams have, that they can talk offline as long as it's not communication with the car. <laughs> they're having a good time with it anyway. So that's Kozlowski running in 11th position after things sorted out from that pretty hairy action on that last restart. And Jimmy Johnson running fourth. How are you doing in there, pal? Pretty good. The entry tonight. We got to be a little smart on exit. Get loose. Especially one and two. That far, you focus forward now. Well, that is the look forward from Jimmy Johnson's car. And that's the race for second place up ahead of him. Truex Jr. and Casey Kane starting to lock up a little bit. Yeah, especially versus these first three cars. I've seen Jimmy giving the wall a lot more room, and that might just be because of the way his car is driving right now. Watching to see 56 got a little extra passenger on the grill of that car, Vince. Yeah, they believe it's a tear-off right on the center, so Casey Kane is going to help them out, backing up to the 56 just a little bit to see if they can get that debris off the grill because Truex's temperatures are higher than crew chief Chad Johnston is comfortable with. Truex got up to him, and then Kane gave him a little help by trying to back up. There's a great shot of that tear-off that's on the grill, giving the 56 some temperature issues. That might be tough to get off because those tear-offs are a little sticky on one side. Yeah, I think it's like it stuck pretty good, too. He still hadn't got to that zone. He almost just got to touch the rear bumper in case he came and turn the uh, inlet fans off so it'll drop off of there. Is that close enough? That's it. That's it right there. That's where we need to be. Rub, rub, and it's gone. Rub, rub. Good job. Use your competitor's car at 170 miles an hour for a little grill dusting. Nice job. Hell Bush, the race leader at Homestead Miami Speedway as we close in on 300 miles today in our aerial coverage provided by Goodyear. From pit lane to victory lane, every NASCAR driver counts on Goodyear tires. Goodyear, the official tire of NASCAR. And as we watch the season finale for the NASCAR Spring Cup Series on this Sunday, we remind you about Monday Night Football on ESPN. 6.30 is Monday Night Countdown, served by Applebee's. And at 8.30, couple of division leaders squaring off. Brian Urlacher leading the Bears against Patrick Willis and the 49ers. It's Monday Night Football in Chicago, San Francisco, tomorrow at 8.30 on ESPN. So, split strategies on the last couple of caution flags in the last couple of rounds of pit stops set up a question of how many more pit stops to the finish among some of the contenders for the win. We check that out by going up to speed, starting with Dave Burns. Give Kyle some credit. His crew chief, Dave Rogers, told me this morning that those high-speed, high-bank tracks like Texas, those play right into Kyle's hands. But this one, this is an adaptive track for Kyle Busch. It's a finesse track. And to run well here, Kyle has to undo some things that he naturally does. Well, he's leading. I think he's adapted. Jamie? Well, a top 10 today for Casey Kane would be the most ever in a single season for him. It's been a great year. His first year with Hendrick Motorsports. Right now, still just a little bit loose for the five car. Vince? Martin Truex Jr. is running third. Twice this season, he's been the runner-up, but has yet to get a win. If he's going to win today, they've got to work on the car. It's a little loose at the start of the run, and then gets tight. The big problem, just not enough grip. Doc? When Jimmy Johnson pitted on lap 158 for right side tires, the question was, could he make it on one more stop? And would that be the move that won him the race and maybe a championship? Here's what Chad just said. Uh, just an update here. The three car
cars ahead of us will have to pit twice. We have to pit once. The 24 behind us has to pit once. If you can't save a little periodically, it may not be a bad idea to try. They want to be able to save enough fuel to get Jimmy Johnson to around lap 212 or 213 to make it on one final stop. Jamie. And that 48's keeping his eye on the 24, his teammate. They don't want the 24 to get around Johnson to lose those points. Jeff Gordon been pretty good all weekend. It has been calm. Not a lot of adjustments today. Been loose and tight. Track bar next stop, Dave. Jamie, back and forth on the strategy for the two car. Now they're talking about just making this a, quote, normal run. So they want Brad to pick up positions if he's able to, and they'll deal with the fuel mileage on the final run. Alan? Riding with Brad Keselowski in 11th position, Jimmy Johnson is fourth. Behind race leader Kyle Busch as we come up on 300 miles today. ESPN's NASCAR nonstop from Homestead, presented by Goodyear. At Homestead Miami Speedway, Kyle Busch was the leader. He has given up that lead for his pit stop. There will be a chassis adjustment for a car. The driver is looking for a little more rear trip. They'll get full of Sunoco fuel. They'll put on four fresh tires, clean the grill, and send Kyle on his way. The 56 of Martin Truex Jr. is just a little bit too tight in the tail end of the run. Four tire change, a slight air pressure adjustment, and Sunoco fuel for Truex. So the pit window open for some of those who did not stop on the lap 158 caution. Casey Kane, the race leader, with now Jimmy Johnson in second place. Kane, one of those who didn't pit when that uh, quick caution followed. And here it looks like he's slowing in turn four and heading to the pit lane. So that will hand the lead of the race over to Jimmy Johnson for the moment. Jamie? And Casey Kane makes his way into the pit box saying he is just a little bit loose. Track bar down one round. They took the break from the driver. They'll give him another one. They'll work around on the left-hand side. It'll be four tires and fill it up for Casey Kane. Now the question becomes... How long till we see the two on the pit lane? Because he was one of those who did not stop, along with Kane and Kyle Busch and Truex and so on, that we've already seen pit here. How long till we see the Blue Deuce down the pit lane under the green flag? I do feel that way. Probability of a caution is pretty good. Uh, you know, right now, that's going to throw a yellow with us boxed in under fuel. You know that. I don't know about the grassy knoll theory, but... <laughs> well, what I'm worried about now is how far are they going to stretch this if, yeah, if they're going to try to stretch it to make it a one more stop, it's real risky for them. Seems like they've already stretched it quite a bit right now, and it doesn't look like that he's coming this lap. That's 59 laps he's run so far. Who will come Back to pit road on that? Sorry, Eddie, who will come to pit road on this lap is Casey Kane uh -oh. for a costly speeding penalty. Speeding on the pit lane on his green flag stop You're a minute ready, ago. He's doing the pass-through penalty now. And under green, that's going to cost the five a lot. Sounds like the two car is going to pit this time. That'll be with 62 laps to go. Out of gas. Oh, oh, there you go. Say again. Out of gas. Coming to you. Be ready. Still under power. He's going to need Second that. Second pump on here. Second pump should be on. Well, we're going to be fine here, guys. Just nail the stop. We'll be fine. Make sure you get a pull. Yeah, for the time being, he has. I still, I'm thinking back to Richmond, the 18 versus the 24, in that scenario of who's going to make the chase. And, and the 18, 
did something that was kind of out of out, out of context there got themselves in trouble and eventually lost to the the 24 by just a point of getting in that top 12. well the twos made a stop with 62 laps to go jimmy johnson who pitted on the both lap 144 and 158 yellows so has another 14 laps where he can go should put himself solidly into an area where they can go to the finish. How many laps have you think you saved in the last few? Right, lap three. Two or three of them just now. On this next pit stop, depending. Now Jimmy's just going to try to get to lap probably 212, 213 to be safe to make it to the end. He's got to run about five more laps. If they can get to that, I, Jack and Ice looks very relaxed there and, and pretty confident. And if this does work for him, that this could win them this championship. And remember, if you're new to NASCAR, there, there are no fuel gauges on board these cars, and all of these mileage calculations are being made based off of the fuel the car used on the last runs of the race. How many laps you ran versus how many gallons it took to fill it back up. Yeah, and in this position right now, Jimmy's able to save a little bit being out front, knowing that the the two car is more than likely, I would have to think that they would make another pit stop. So he's able to save some more and get them to that point. Jimmy Johnson has said before that these races where fuel strategy and stretching fuel comes into play, not his specialty. <laughs> no, it certainly hasn't been their specialty, but they've worked hard on it and gotten a lot better, I think, Andy. Yeah, they have. They've, got, they've really worked on this, knowing it's a weakness, and they've gotten better. This is where it's really going to count, though, this one right here. So now we'll, begin, right. now we'll begin to see the cars that pitted when Johnson did all start to drift onto the pit lane for pit stops. Marco Sambros, Eric Almarola in as we continue to watch Johnson while Keslowski runs in 24th place. Johnson is the leader in the middle of this split schedule of pit stops. The danger here for the 48 team in trying to get to the window to make it to the finish on fuel from here is running the car out of fuel, to trying to, to get there. Yeah, but I think he's there right now. They're pitting next time. Four tires for leaving on fuel in a full of fuel. Saying they're going to hold till. Chad says to go on the fuel. They say they can see that in the can. They can tell when it's full. Hey, can't speed. Can't speed. can't speed right here. Yeah, I think he might be coming back, Doc. Could be a critical mistake. Saw that official. Oh, got to come back yet. Oh, wow. boy. Oh, my gosh. We talked about the pressure on the pit crews. A mistake there. You know, you can't. Come on back down pit road. Is that right, Jen? Yep, that works. Very, very costly mistake. They were waiting on fuel anyway, so there wasn't a lot of pressure on the tire changers to try to be quick. I'll tell you, though, this is a big race, and the nerves are high. Really hard to stay calm. The pit crews just felt like that was their last chance to get out there and be part of this. And it's one thing to make a mistake early in the race. You have time to recover from it. Another to make it now.
NASCAR rules say you must have five lug nuts installed on each wheel when the car leaves the pit lane. And in the race for speed, one was missing. So, suddenly, Brad Keselowski is running in seventh position, and Jimmy Johnson is a lap down in 25th. I got a big picture story for you if you want to hear it. Go ahead. That car in front of you has a penalty. Car in front of you will be pitting again. Car in front of you will be pitting again. So, Brad knows. And Kyle Busch leads Brad in command of the championship. Ford EcoBoost 400 at Homestead, Miami is brought to you by the all-new Ford Fusion. Go further. Coca-Cola, it's time to refuel. Coca-Cola, open happiness. And AT&T, the nation's largest 4G network. AT&T, rethink possible. The final race of the 2012 Sprint Cup Series Championship on a beautiful night in South Florida. Kyle Busch still out front by about a second and a half, but a pivotal moment in the championship. Jimmy Johnson possibly in the catbird seat until this last pit stop. You can see the official on the top right of the screen pointing, not getting all those lug nuts on. Ray, that was probably it for Jimmy Johnson. It's uh, ironic. You know, when Jimmy Johnson was in here on the countdown show and we asked him if they were going to have to do different strategies, he said they were. They end up doing fuel strategies, two tires. It looks like if the race stays green, they've got a legitimate shot of winning this championship make a mistake in the pits and lose all of that yeah absolutely uh it's over with right now for the 48 team i mean that's all there is to it if this had stayed green and they had to drop that lug nut they had enough fuel to go the entire length of the rest of the race even with a green white checker uh finish possibly winning this championship but with that drop lug nut rusty it's all over well, that's a massive mistake for the 48 brand there's no doubt about that it puts a ride in the two cars lap right now they can afford to throttle back a little bit save some fuel they've already ran 60 laps they did have a couple couple caution laps in there to help them do that i think these guys can stretch it to the very end now let me throw something totally crazy at you i think if the caution flag comes out the no 48 car boys. The 48 car could stay out under caution, take the wave around. They got enough fuel to make it in, but they don't have good tires. If a caution comes out real quick after that, put four tires, then it's a bonsai to the end. We'll see what happens. Brad Kozlowski is aware of what happened with Jimmy Johnson. Dave? They were in trouble, Nicole, and here's why. Their mileage has gotten much worse. They were going to have to stop. Before Jimmy had his trouble, they were going to have to come down the road one more time. Happen? because Paul Wolf's crew chief told him that his mileage had worsened and that they were going to not make it on this final run. Alan? Jimmy Johnson is off the pace. And Jimmy Johnson is on the apron on the access road to the inside. Look at the smoke inside the car. And no, that's not coming out of Jimmy's ears. I thought I saw something coming out of the back of the right rear of the car, but I thought maybe it was sand coming up off the track when he was running really high. But it must be something else. Doc? They're thinking it's a drive frame problem. They're looking, they're looking under the car, there's not a vibration, nothing rubbing. And he said, maybe it's a drive frame coming through the firewall. Smoke got worse. Now Jimmy is shut the engine off, fired it back up. And apparently they are done. And the championship for 2012 will not go to Jimmy Johnson. Not a sight we expected to see today. The 48 car being pushed behind the wall. Uh, things have changed in such a hurry, and that's what this sport's about, just how quickly we talk about it can change, but it really looked like there for a few minutes that we were going to have a battle right to the end, having no idea what may happen with the 48, a chance to win, and, and the, the two car going to have to pit again, but uh, certainly all of this has changed. Disappointing for Mr. Hendrick. Big picture here. Real big picture here. The 48's gone back to the
the garage. Something broke. Now that's a real big pitcher for Brad. That's uh, pretty well clinches it for this two punch. Essentially, they just need to run it out, stay out of trouble, and the dream will come true. Yeah. One it's thing it does do, though, it, it enables them to now get a little more aggressive and try to maybe win this race if their car is capable. We don't know if it is or not. I think he's still going to have to pit, so I don't know if yeah. winning is a... Well, if the caution comes out. Yeah, that's right. See. But even if the caution doesn't come out, what it allows them to do is, is stop for a splash of fuel if they have to and not worry about it. Yeah, exactly. And they've earned that, you yeah. know. But uh, I, I think that they got away with maybe a little strategy that, that went around them, and uh, they're going to be fortunate here. So just after 300 miles in the Ford EcoBoost 400, the championship picture takes a big swing. Johnson is out of it. Keselowski's in command. We go NASCAR nonstop, presented by Goodyear. To go. Homestead Miami Speedway in the final race of the NASCAR Sprint Cup season. Kyle Busch, Martin Truex Jr., both of whom really, really, really could use a win. Problem is, while they fight for the lead, they're both on the short end of fuel strategy right now if this goes green to the finish. And while we watch the race for the win, the championship picture, Jimmy Johnson's car being swarmed over by mechanics back in the garage, Doc. Yeah, Jimmy staying in the car, no warning, no vibration. He said uh, a little smoke, then a whole lot of smoke, and it came down pit road, and it's the rear gear, Alan. They're going to change the drive shaft. They're going to replace the rear gear. they got to clean all the uh, gear oil out from underneath the car because if it goes back out, it'll be a big cloud of smoke, and NASCAR will send them back in and not let them finish. So they're cleaning the car, changing the rear gear, changing the drive shaft, and Jimmy Johnson wants to go out and finish the race, but unfortunately he will not finish this chase with a chance to be a champion. Heartbreak. Just heartbreak for Jimmy Johnson. They're trying to hold on to second in points right now. There's only one point between Clint Boyer and uh, Jimmy Johnson as they run. It looks like Clint Boyer can make it to the finish on his field. And the disappointment for the 48 team opening the door for Roger Penske's team and Brad Keselowski to try and run out the string and claim their first NASCAR Sprint Cup Series championship. That's Kathy Penske, Roger's wife. She's been on their pit box, a sight not frequently seen in these NASCAR circles over the duration of Penske Racing's competition in this series. But she's been there in this stretch run for the title. And nervously looking on. Nervously looking on and understanding just how much this means uh, to their family and all that they've done in this sport and uh, you know, there, there's not a better person uh, around here. We talk about Mr. Hendrick and, and Jack Roush and, and others around here, but uh, if there's a class act in this sport, it's certainly Roger Penske, and this would be a well-deserved championship. Roger surrounded by Walt Zarnecki, one of his trusted executives for decades now. Tim Sindrick, the president of the Penske Racing. Bud Denker, also one of the Penske executives. That's the story of the team owner. And what about the driver, the young man from Michigan, the son of a racer who grew up dreaming of big things, didn't necessarily have the resources to pursue a career to follow in his father's footsteps, but through hard work and through dedication and perseverance has put himself in position to become an NASCAR Sprint Cup champion, a dream that he can't really yet fathom what would feel like. It's darn near impossible to answer what it means to win a championship. It's not something that you can explain in words. It's something that you have to live, uh, that you have to feel the sacrifices made by family members, team members, uh, and even yourself. You have to see that and feel that, and you can't speak it in words. And, and I can tell you that I'm surrounded by a bunch of people who have spent their whole lives trying to create this opportunity, not just for me, but for themselves. Not just create, take advantage of the opportunity. Yeah, that was well said by Brad Kozlowski. Hard to put into words, but uh, very gratifying and satisfying as a competitor. And look at the list of people he would join. Fewest full seasons before a first Sprint Cup title. Brad Kozlowski on his way here at Homestead Miami Speedway tonight.
for both Kyle Busch, 18, and Martin Truex Jr., 56, is that they need to pit again for fuel to make it to the checkered flag, while the third place car, running some 15 seconds behind them, Jeff Gordon, is in position to try and make it to the finish with the fuel he has on board. 15 seconds is a long time on a mile and a half racetrack. We wait on Jeff. Certainly bring up a lot of conversation if he should go on and win this race. Uh, all those people that thought that he shouldn't even be here, he should be suspended for his actions last week. And taking no chances, and with the freedom to do so, as Jimmy Johnson is behind the wall. Here's Keslowski coming in, Dave. You could call it a parade lap of sorts on pit road. The crew will very meticulously and methodically go about changing the four tires and giving him fuel. When he was reminded that Jimmy was in the garage and he asked, are you sure? They said, yes, the 48 is in the garage. He said, then let's race. He'll get four fresh tires. He can go about as hard as he wants to as long as he's careful. Nothing to lose now. But if they're going to have a chance to race for the win, they're going to need a caution flag to get back around. They see up top that uh, Clint Hoyer just still one point behind Johnson. If he can gain another spot on the track, he will uh, tie Jimmy in points, but he probably need a couple of spots to take that. that yes, point. I'd say that comes in first and second place out there with Kyle Busch and Martin Truex having to pit. And I think Hoyer can probably make it. He should be right there. But we've seen them get really good fuel mileage, so that might be the two spots he's looking for. Denny Hamlin, that 11 car you see being passed by Brad Kozlowski. Sounds like that car's down a cylinder and off the pace. Tough way to end what's been a tough chase for Hamlin, who had such high hopes of competing for the championship and maybe holding the big trophy tonight. Martin Truex Jr. was up there. Right on Kyle Busch's back bumper for the race lead. Well, he's been flirting with that wall I can't all believe day. It. I can't. He, I, he I can't believe it took 250 laps for him to do that. He flirted with it. She slapped him on the cheek. Yeah. He's been right there on it. And what a great race Truex has run. Been right there just dogging Kyle Busch, passing him a couple of times for the lead. Those cars to his inside, Bernard 27, Montoya 42, not for position. And Truex has fallen a couple of seconds behind Kyle Busch. When will the 18 pit? Will there be another caution flag to shuffle the finish of this one up again? As we work into the final stages of this final race of the season, the big story, Jimmy Johnson's attempts to overtake Brad Keselowski to win the NASCAR Sprint Cup Championship, foiled twice. First a late pit stop, where they left the lug nut off, and he had to pit again. Then shortly after that, the rear end gear on his 48 car burned up. Johnson went to the garage about 20 laps ago and is there now getting his car repaired, hoping to get back out and finish this race. Brad Kozlowski, well in command of the championship, made an extra pit stop to make sure they had enough fuel to the finish. He's running in 21st place, but that's going to be more than enough. All he has to do is run out the string. My dad was born there. I grew up not far from there. We heard about, read about, knew about, worked about cars. It didn't really matter where you were in Michigan or what time of year it was. You were always talking about cars. It's been a tough decade for the auto industry. Imagine their delight as you see, see Kyle Busch pitting on the left. If one of their own becomes the NASCAR Sprint Cup champion, and now it's all but done. Brad Keselowski, born and raised a Michigander, and naturally a car guy. So many layers to the story surrounding this young man becoming a champion. Well, this is just proof of, I always heard the adage of hard work and dedication will pay off. And 
this man, young man has a lot of that. And uh, he's a great student of these race cars and the sport. And uh, he just studies it. This is what his life has always been about. And you know, he'd like to see good things happen like that when you put forth that effort. And this is just another example of that happening. So you saw Kyle Busch make the pit stop. Jeff Gordon is the race leader. Jeff has a two-second lead on Clint Boyer. They are on the similar fuel schedule. So now the question is, do they have enough to make it to the checkered flag? And ironically, finish one and two. And you see top of the screen at the moment as they run. Boyer has overhauled Jimmy Johnson for second in the championship. That's worth a pretty good chunk of cash at the uh, yeah. champion celebration in Las Vegas in a couple of weeks. You see Gordon, he's got about a two, a little over two second lead, so he can't really just start soft pedaling and try to save fuel. Yeah. He may end up having to race Clint Boyer before this one's over. Yeah, he may have to. Uh, Boyer was in two laps before him in that last one, so I'm not sure if Boyer's going to be able to run hard enough because he's still trying to save enough just to get to the end. But, wow, how strange things happen in this sport. Two competitors that were in a big, literally, brawl on the racetrack and off last weekend. And here they are trying to decide who's going to win this last race of the year. Both coming away from it less than satisfied with the outcome of both the on-track and off-track activities. And now here they are, one and two, in the final laps of this one. And should circumstances turn up, could be side-by-side -side for a late restart or nose to tail racing for the checkered flag in the final laps. We'll see. But if Boyer could get to him, might put a lot of money on what would happen from there. If he could catch it. If he could get there. Thinking we'd see a little bump and run? Uh, at the very least. <laughs> <laughs> what a frustrating season it's been for Jeff Gordon. Such high hopes of being one of the people racing for this championship, coming into the chase for the NASCAR Sprint Cup, worked so hard across the summer months to rally to get into the championship by that slimmest of margins over Kyle Busch on the final qualifying night in Richmond, if you will, and then in the very first chase race, had a mechanical problem under the hood of his car that threw him hard into the turn one wall at Chicagoland and set them so far back they've never been able to recover. Yeah, they fought after that, kept fighting and had some good finishes and then uh, just seemed like problem after problem kept on. But uh, this team has, has continued to battle and I think that's a sign of a great champion there and, and a really solid crew behind him. And even if he comes up a spot short tonight and one spot short in the championship, what a 2012 for Kansas Clint Boyer and Michael Waltrip Racing. Getting together for this season wasn't necessarily it's fair to say something that Boyer saw himself doing but went there they sold him on the fact that they were a growing team and a developing team and going to be a very competitive team now he's got three wins this season and he's going to finish second in the championship it looks like yeah, I'm not even sure that the race team knew just what a driver they were getting in Clint Boyer as well I, I'm, I'm, we've all talked about how Boyer didn't really know what kind of team he was going to with Michael Walter but I'll tell you, this has been a great marriage between these two, the, the driver and the team. Yeah, and I think it's a great example of his ability. Look at the different types of racetracks that he won on. He won on a road course. He won at Charlotte. It just He gets to the job done on a lot of different type of racetracks. He's just very, very solid. And I'll tell you, another thing about him, he's a fierce competitor, but he just rallies people around him because he has a great personality and, and that rubs off on them and shows them just how much he loves doing what he's doing and the opportunity that he's being given. So Gordon and Boyer racing for the win here. They're 14 seconds ahead of third place Eric Almarola. Do they have enough fuel to the finish and how does that play out in the final four laps? Boyer eating into Gordon's gap little by little each lap around. Yeah, he's closing it down if Gordon has to save any fuel at all and Boyer doesn't have to. He might can get to that back bumper. Brad Kozlowski still in 17th position, a lap down after the insurance pit stop. Just working his way through these final laps on his way to a championship. Dale, a story that you can certainly relate to, a local short track racer, the son of a racer, uh, started out knocking around on the same short tracks where his dad did and trying to follow in the footsteps of an accomplished father in the sport. Never the easiest thing. Finding funding, finding opportunities. And yet, 
this young man has shown that for a local short track racer in this modern day and age of NASCAR, you can still find a way all the way to the top. Yeah, some of those stories that he was talking about where he'd carry a little briefcase and had these books in there and uh, to, to read about chassis. I don't know if I was doing that, but I was certainly around the racetrack a lot uh, with my dad. And, and, you know, just because your father has been successful, and there are no guarantees. You have to continue to work hard. And Brad Keselowski has certainly done that. And it's just been fun to watch him come through the Nationwide Series, become a champion there, and then quickly take this Roger Penske team to a championship. Jeff Gordon has stabilized the lead over Clint Boyer. Boyer slipping back a little bit from where he was a couple of laps ago. Do they have enough fuel to make the final three miles here at Homestead and get to the checkered flag one and two? I'm sure as Boyer came in here, though, he really wasn't thinking about it. He knew he was in a battle for the third spot. All of a sudden, the doors open for him to finish second in the points. With all they've accomplished, almost unfathomable that Hendrick Motorsports has never won at this Homestead Miami Speedway. They are one lap away as the captain has showed up in his team's pit down from the top of the tower for the final lap. Jeff Gordon leading the race. Brad Kozlowski in charge of the championship. After what has been, it's fair to say, one of the more tumultuous weeks of his storied NASCAR Sprint Cup career. Check the flag go, and a win at Homestead for Jeff Gordon. Hey, I'm proud of you guys. That was awesome. And the checkered flag at a NASCAR Sprint Cup championship for Penske Racing and Michigan's Brad Keselowski. Yeah, boys, we did a great job. What an awesome season. said he didn't know what it would feel like to be a champion well he's going to know now paul wolf paired together with brad a couple of years ago winning the nascar nationwide championship one of the bright minds in the sport considered by many to be a dynamic duo these two yeah, i'm not sure this isn't just the start we don't want to overlook this first one but this is a team they keep this together a lot of good people involved there that can certainly make a difference. How about Dodge going out and they get the championship leaving the sport right now? Can you take that with the lame duck engine program over at Penske and how they were able to give them good engines, great power to win this championship? There's the victory celebration. The other end of the story, Jimmy Johnson going out of the race with mechanical failure about three quarters of the way through. Jamie? Well, at one point of this race, he was on top of the points over Brad Kozlowski, then the issue on pit road, then ending up back here. Can you describe what these moments have been like for the last 20 minutes? Yeah, pretty heartbreaking, you know. We were doing what we needed to, um, and certainly in position, put a lot of pressure on the two car, but this race and stuff happens. Um, stuff out of my control, certainly, so uh, I just got to reflect back on an amazing year, and just a, a ton of effort for everybody, Hendrick Motorsports, especially this 48 team. Great support from Lowe's, uh, Chevrolet, my fan base, my wife and daughter. Um, you know, definitely not the result we wanted, but you know, I'm very proud of how we raced all year long, the success we had on track, and the pace we had on track. Didn't get the result, but um, that's life. We'll come back next year and try again. All right, five-time champion ends his day in the garage. Alan? Certainly a terrific fight for the championship between Jimmy Johnson and Brad Keselowski. <laughs> and I think the burnout session's over because there's no more rear tires on that two car. <laughs> what a terrific job Brad has done just all year long. Just incredible to watch him every single one of these racetracks. And for Roger Penske, he called it 
winning a NASCAR Sprint Cup championship said it would be the pinnacle of achievement in motorsports. And Dave, for a guy who's accomplished so much, he's just achieved the pinnacle for him. He has, we'll ask him about it now, as uh, guys from the blue and the yellow teams come over to congratulate him. So many people here tonight to see this possibly happen. And now that it has, Roger, what's the feeling? Well, I'll tell you, it's uh, been a great season. I just can't take my hat off enough to all of the great guys on our team, you know, from Brad, obviously, Paul Wolf, and the whole team, Travis Geisler, when you think about Mike Nelson, Scott Curry, all those guys who built those great engines. Not one failure all year long in that Dodge engine. So I want to thank Dodge for what they've done for us and all the people. That, and this win goes to all these servicemen around the world that have put so much in their hearts for us to keep us safe and secure. So for me, it's just a double win. Why is this so difficult? Why was it so hard to get here, Roger? Well, I think the competition is just you know, so super. And you think about uh, the people that have won this series over the years. You know, Rick Hendricks, a great friend of mine. You can see Johnson, those guys are right there, right down to the last few laps. But it's just something uh, that you have to work on. And these guys are the best. And that makes it a little sweeter, right? Absolutely. Sweet night indeed for Penske Racing and that man, Roger Penske, Allen. The cup to the captain, finally. 23 full-time seasons before he gets his first one. Man who became a captain of industry partly on the success on the racetrack, building that name, that brand. Started out as a racer himself behind the wheel. Brad Kozlowski trying to make his way through the swarm to begin the celebration. Our Goodyear superior performer. Yeah, he finished 15th today, but he was right up there doing everything he needed to throughout this race. And of course, what a tremendous drive to the championship when he looked the five-time champ in the eye and never blinked. Just uh, not, not one time did, did he back down from any challenge that was thrown at him. And even when Jimmy Johnson went and you know, won two races in a row, got max points, Brad still believed that this was the team to beat and certainly proved that. Well, the most overshadowed victory of the season is the win of the last race while the champions recognized but Jeff Gordon is going to end this season in victory lane we go there presented by tire rack victory and overshadowed by the championship but for this it's big for Jeff Gordon you proved last week you're a fighter and you won't give up Jeff what does it mean to end the season in victory lane oh my god it means so much I mean this is for DuPont right here 20 years that is a long time to be together with a sponsor for them to commemorate that with this uh, awesome paint scheme with this silver car means so much I knew we had a great race car uh, going into the race and you know I, I at times I didn't think we had a winning car uh, but you know what we played the strategy perfectly and we had a really good car and uh, you know it's just unbelievable to uh, to experience this and you know after last week you know and then to come here and and battle like this and end up in victory lane just unreal so I gotta thank drive in hunger DuPont Pepsi Quaker State Chevrolet uh, you know everybody that makes it. this team is just awesome I love Alan Gutsen this is a great way for us to end this season I know it's about the championship so turn it over to the champion well, Jeff, hold on. There was a lot in the news this week, of course, regarding you. And then, of course, you and Clint Boyer end the race as his kids come into victory lane. You two battling at the end, Jeff. Is this just redemption after what happened last week? Can, can you believe that? Uh, you know, I, I mean, there was one restart where I had Joey and uh, maybe even Eric and Clint right there surrounding me. And, you know, we... Uh, you know the, the, that thing is gonna gonna work itself out some way through racing, and I, I you know, I felt terrible about how I went about it, and I still uh, regret the way I went about it. And um, you know what? But I can't take it back. But we can do is look forward and, and race guys as hard and clean as we possibly can. And um, you know, this is, this is a great way to to get some positive things going because uh, this year has been real up and down. So this is awesome to be able to have my family here in Victory Lane. Got to thank Sprint, all the fans. What an amazing, uh, you know, turnout this has been for this final uh, race and the championship battle. And I got I to take my hat off to Jimmy Johnson and that team too. They did an excellent job battling 
for this championship. I know they didn't win it, but uh, you know what? They were up against somebody really incredible. Uh, you know, and Brad, they, they did an excellent job. Paul Wolf, and I got to say congratulations to Roger Penske on his first championship. That, that I know how much that means to Roger being in the sport as long as he has. Let's go back upstairs to Allen. Jeff Gordon wins the race. They're setting up for the championship celebration. The NASCAR Sprint Cup Trophy to be presented to Roger Penske, Paul Wolf, and Brad Keselowski. We'll have that coming up. The spectacular sight of the championship celebration at the Homestead Miami Speedway as Brad Keselowski rolls his Penske Racing Dodge into the celebration area. Gets ready to enjoy a tremendous accomplishment. Rick Hendrick congratulating Roger Penske. It's Rick's wife Linda talking to the captain there. It's like a little hat swap going on there. Yeah, these two are great friends. Rick Hendrick and Roger Penske. Well, in a few minutes, Roger will be joining his crew chief, Paul Wolf, and his driver, Brad Keselowski, up on stage to put his hands on that long-awaited trophy. Yeah, for Paul Wolf, getting his first championship. I'm not sure it's sink sinking in yet. But it will. And there's Chad Canals coming up to congratulate him. Chad knows what it means. Knows all the hard work it takes to get there. Yes, he does. And it's about that crew chief having to have all of those people keeping everybody happy and going. Just, I mean, week after week after week. Yeah, that's a tough job. It's a big organization like this, but uh, boy, it sure is gratifying in the end. The 28 year old from the Detroit suburb of Rochester Hills, Michigan has seen the dream come true. He's the NASCAR Sprint Cup champion for 2012 and about to climb from his car and begin the celebration. gentlemen here he is your 2012 nascar sprint cup champion brad keselowski as he begins to shower the crew back hey brad your mom Kay just said the keselowski family has waited a lifetime for this moment what does it mean to you well i saw this really cool video that ray lewis did and uh you know he said in it that, uh, you know, I always, throughout my whole life, I've been told I'm not big enough, not fast enough, not strong enough, I don't have what it takes. And I've used that as a chip on my shoulders to carry me through my whole career, Jerry, my whole career. And, you know, it took till this year for me to realize that that was right, man, they were right. I'm, I'm not big enough, not fast enough, strong enough. No team, or no person is, only a team can do that. And these guys up here, they make me big enough, they make me fast enough, they make me strong enough to do anything we want to do. And it's because it's of these guys. I, I can't be here without them. I really can't. Um, you know, th this isn't a one-man effort. I might get the glory, but it's about these guys. It's about my family. You know, I, I use this saying all the time that, uh, you know, life is a team sport. And uh, a sport is a part of being, uh, you know, a, a part of this world, part of being in this, uh, in this life. And my family's part of my team, just like these guys are my coworkers. And uh, without them, I'm nothing. So I'm just, just very proud, very happy for every one of them. Uh, every one of the people that's a part of my team, I feel like I have the best team in the world around me. Brad, you just didn't win this championship. You beat one of the all-time greatest champions in the modern era of NASCAR, Jimmy Johnson. How special is that for you? He's the best. He proved it here today. He was going to win this damn race, and, and I know that. Um, and we were not as fast as we wanted to be, and we'd be the first to admit that. But my guys never gave up. We kept working, and at the end there, we were even capable of getting back up enough to where it wouldn't have mattered if he won, which made me feel a lot better. <laughs> but uh, my guys just did a great job all year long, and especially in this chase, and I'm lucky to have them. When you were growing up, it was very tough. There were a lot of sacrifices. There's Roger Penske in to give his driver a hug. 
Rick Hendry coming over also to hug. All the congratulations ongoing for Brad Keselowski, who is the 2012 NASCAR Sprint Cup champion. What an effort, giving Roger Penske his first ever NASCAR championship in the Sprint Cup. Alan? Doc will talk more with Brad when he's presented the NASCAR Sprint Cup championship trophy up on that stage in just a few moments. How close the captain Roger Penske came to winning a championship with our Rusty Wallace and to share his congratulations. The captain is the champ this year. Well, how hard is it to win a Sprint Cup championship? Really? Tell them to take a good long look at Roger Penske. The captain's been taking a good long look at that cup for 40 years now. Hiring legendary drivers, winning piles of trophies, but some way, somehow, failing to grab the cup. Finishing second. That's not something Mr. Penske's accustomed to, from the boardroom to sports cars. And oh yeah, he's had a pretty nice little run in Indianapolis. Now he stands at the brink of what has always eluded him. He's finally found that championship caliber NASCAR combination, as unlikely as it is. This finally is the moment. This finally is the year when the cup finally becomes the captain's. Fifteen Indianapolis 500 victories, 23 championships across a variety of series, and now the one that he's been chasing for so long that's eluded him, the NASCAR Sprint Cup Championship. We go to the championship stage for the presentation to Roger Penske and his driver, Brad Kozlowski, and Dr. Jerry Punch. And the celebration continuing down here, Alan. Uh, it is my pleasure now to introduce the uh, chairman and CEO of NASCAR, Ryan France, for the trophy presentation. On, be on behalf, Brad, of millions of NASCAR fans around the world, I know how proud you are to give Roger Penske and the team your first championship well-earned. Congratulations. You're going to make a great champion. Thank you, Brian, and thanks to everyone at NASCAR. Thanks to every fan that comes out this year. We appreciate it. We couldn't do this without you. Thank you, guys. Brad Kozlowski becoming the 29th different champion in 64 years of history of NASCAR. And now for the all-important check from series title sponsor, Sprint. Let me introduce Jamie Jones. Senior Vice President of Sprint. Getting a hug from Mom K. His dad is already up here. Both his mom and dad in tears. Brother Brian is here. And now Mr. John. Brad. You've already proven yourself as an incredible talent, and now you're a champion. Congratulations to you and the number two Miller Lite team on your first NASCAR Sprint Cup championship. And to the entire Penske Racing family, we congratulate them on their first NASCAR Sprint Cup Series title. And on behalf of Sprint and our 60,000 employees, I am proud to present you with this check for more than $5.6 million. Brad's response was, I'll take it. Brad, as someone who grew up on the short tracks, it wasn't about the trophies necessarily, the money today, but when you look back on this first championship, what do you think you'll cherish most about what you guys have accomplished? Just how far we've come. You know, Penske Racing, this team is phenomenal, and I'm so fortunate to have them. Everybody back in North Carolina, Mooresville, that supports this team, I hope you're listening. Uh, none of this is possible without them, and I feel so lucky to have everyone here. Uh, just a dream come true to have a car like the Blue Deuce, everybody in the Miller Lite Dodge, and to, to have fast cars, to have a great team. This is, uh, this is what you dream of as a driver, and I'm just so very fortunate. Let's go back and talk to the man who gave you this opportunity to win this championship. Roger, we'll get you to turn around if we would. Roger Penske, 
40 years of trying, 15 Indianapolis 500s, but today, tonight, for the first time, you're a NASCAR Sprint Cup champion. Where does this rank among all the accomplishments? Well, I tell you, it's at the top of the mark now. As I told you, when Brad and I got together three years ago and we talked about a plan, uh, we executed. But I want to thank all the people in our company, all our 40,000 employees that have helped us. And this race shop team is outstanding. Look at the reliability of that car and the engine. All Dodge, I want to thank Dodge for what they've done. And certainly Miller Lite and Shell Pennzoil. But this guy, Keselowski, is something special. And uh, for me, you know, it's a lifelong goal when you think about Hendricks and you think about Earnhardt and Childress and Gibbs and just to mention all the guys uh, that have been up there and we've been close, but we've never delivered. But uh, this guy here delivered it for us uh, every week all through the year and gave us this championship. Boy, I tell you, man, I love you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> man, I thank you. Let's bring in, let's bring in mom and dad here for just a second. Bob Keselowski. Brad, you were... Brad was five years old when you won your ARCA title, and you said to him, someday you will win one and you will understand what it means. What does it mean for a dad to see his son's dreams realized? Well, that, that's something you're always going to say and, and naturally you hope for it, but how many people get to realize this dream, Jerry? There's a million short track racers out there. You know, and I, just, I was selected to, uh, one of millions uh, and got this opportunity and it paid off. And, Wow, I'm still just blown away. <laughs> Got to be so special. And, and mom over here with the sunglasses. Let me bring Kay in a second. Kay, come over here. Let's, let's, get, let's get Kay in. Kay, you said, you said the Keselowski family had waited a lifetime for this moment. What does it mean to you, to, to dad and mom, to see this uh, young guy that you gave so much sacrifice for become a champion? You have reached the pinnacle, the absolute pinnacle of success. And I am so unbelievably proud of my son. I can't even begin to tell you. Kay Keselowski, Brad Keselowski, and Roger Penske, a NASCAR Sprint Cup champion. And Alan, the day began with everyone cheering Kid Rock, and the night ends with everyone cheering another kid from Michigan, this kid Keselowski. An American story. Rising to the top based on determination, guts. Brad Keselowski, NASCAR champion. Keselowski, the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series championship merchandise, including commemorative caps, t-shirts, diecast. You can shop now at nascar.com slash superstore. Brad Keselowski, the champion. Roger Penske, the championship team owner. Can you wrap it all up and put one nice bow on it? Well, it, it, it's a massive night for Team Penske. I just went down there and talked to Roger, and he's he's over the moon. They're so excited, and I'm so excited for him. I drove that car for so long, never could close the deal, but I'm so glad Brad was able to do it for Roger. Rick Hendrick was down there. All the drivers were coming by. It was a huge scene down there, and I, I just can't be happy for him. This guy deserved the seat at the front of the table. He deserved this championship. He's paid his dues, guys. Yeah. And just what a fantastic night for Team Penske. Tremendous night for Roger Penske and his whole organization. Tremendous night for this young race car driver, Brad Keselowski. Someone we saw wreck a little over a year ago at, at, at Road Atlanta. Thought his career may be in shambles. Comes back out of nowhere. And now, here we stand with the 2012 Sprint Cup champion, Brad Keselowski. Hey, and, and congratulations to Penske, to Keselowski, but congratulations to the Dodge folks. Really, That's right. Uh, leading the sport with a championship, great for them too. In Miami now, and not too long, we'll be in another Florida town. 98 days, Daytona, baby! <laughs> Daytona 500, days. and we will start the 2013 quest for a championship. You can get your Daytona uh, 2013 Daytona 500 tickets now. Call 1-866-GO-NASCAR. Final thoughts as we close out for the final time this year. Unbelievable. I just cannot believe Brad Keselowski won this championship. I'm going, to get, I'm going to get me a Miller, buddy. Congrats <laughs> once again to Jeff Gordon, who actually won this race and, of course, our champion for this season, Brad Keselowski. Much more coming up on SportsCenter as we continue our post-race coverage. We'll hear from more drivers involved in this. Sports Center coming up next with more coverage from Homestead Miami Speedway. The crowning moment for Brad Keselowski and his two car. Brad and Roger Penske, they are the champions. 2012 has come to a close. More from Sports Center coming up.